moisture out ahead of it. And this morning you see a lot of false return off to the north. Most of the heavy rain now to the south with that frontal boundary uh, between Marathon and Key Largo. A couple of light showers moving over the 10,000 Island area. But as we broaden the view again, we have some false return mixed in with some real rain showers out over the Gulf. So we can't rule out the chance of additional rainfall here today. But again, it's going to be isolated at best. Our temperatures a little on the warm side. Our average is 71. We're at 74 Fort Myers, 75 of Benita Springs. And with the moisture still ahead of that front, we've got visibility issues here. Three to four miles right now for LaBelle to Immokalee. A little bit of patchy fog to continue with here early. Here's how the computer model paints today. By 10 o'clock, not much happening. And then you see through the afternoon, there's that chance of rain. But it's later, 7 to 8 o'clock, as those thunderstorms develop. So as you head out early, do know you got some patchy fog as we got a humid morning. We'll see temperatures today in the upper 80s. All right, thanks for that, Trent. Well, the Lee County School District will do air quality tests on 38 schools today with the hope that they can reopen those schools next week. Yeah, the plan right now is to open Lee County schools in phases. Superintendent Dr. Christopher Bernier made the announcement yesterday. He says schools will open Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. He says the district will find temporary buildings for the schools with the worst damage. So here's a look at the plan for next week specifically. Uh, on Monday, 11 elementary and two middle schools are back in class. On Tuesday, 10 elementary, one middle, two Title I schools and two high schools will reopen. Those two high schools are Cypress Lake and Ida Baker. So you can find the complete list of the openings that are happening on Monday and Tuesday. It's on our website, fox4now.com. Uh, also, if you're asking why your child's school is not on the list, Lee County Schools put together a video detailing what it calls the nine safety criteria. So a building has to meet those nine criteria before students can return. You can find all of the information, information excuse me, in the video at leeschools.net. Families who had to relocate because of the storm can send their children to a school that's closer to where they live now. This morning, the school district has five locations open to make it easier for parents to re-enroll their children. Those sites are in Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Lehigh Acres, and Bonita Springs. You can see the locations right here on your screen. You can all this, also find this information on fox4now.com. They open at 9 this morning and will stay open until 4.30 or until the last person in line has been helped. We spoke to one family who chose to switch to online learning. A man named Paul McCartney, who is from Cape Coral, says the storm damaged his house, so his family is now moving north. He says switching his daughter to online learning will help make sure she doesn't fall behind. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do, so them being set up has been real convenient. Um, but to make the decision, it's not been easy all along. Yeah, of course, yeah, we've been in our home now seven years, and time to move on. Students who go to schools that will not be opening soon because they need to be repaired will automatically be enrolled in a nearby school. They do not need to re-enroll. Well, the boil water notice for all Lee County utility customers has been lifted. So earlier this week, the majority of customers were able to safely use their drinking water. And now the Town and River community, North Trail RV Park and Siesta Isles neighborhoods they are all in the clear as well. If you are not on Lee County Utilities, you should contact your utility provider for information on any boil water notices in your area. If you're in the city of Fort Myers, that has been lifted as has Cape Coral. Well, city leaders in Cape Coral need your help to expedite the cleanup process. When you put debris out on the roadway, make sure not to block utility boxes or lift stations. City officials say by avoiding these areas, it will prevent damage to those boxes and the stations, and that will speed up any repairs that need to be made. City officials say that they have several claw trucks going around right now picking up debris. It will, of course, take a while before all of that debris is cleared out. Power crews will be back on Pine Island today. They'll work to restore power to more of the island. Here's a look at some of the work LCEC crews did yesterday. There's power now on a stretch of Springfellow Road, which includes the fire stations, Town Center and Pine Island Elementary School. LCEC says its focus is on the barrier islands and a few customers in places like Cape Coral and North Fort Myers who still do not have power. Internet service, at least on Pine Island, is a different story, though. Most people tell us almost nobody has it. That's a problem for people who say they can't apply for FEMA help. Some people tell us they are struggling to get a hold of emergency responders. Four days ago, we were having problems. They were having trouble locating people because they couldn't call them back. 
they couldn't keep people on the line. Now a Starlink hotspot is set up on the southern part of the island, but people say it doesn't have enough bandwidth and they're asking for more resources to meet the demand. Well, the Naples airport is reopening today. This is for the first time since Hurricane Ian hit our area. Not all of the runway, run, runways, excuse me, will be open. Crews are still working on repairing some of the lighting that was damaged in the storm. The Naples Airport Authority says other nearby airports like Southwest Florida International provided resources to help them get their run, runways up and going again. First responders who have storm damage will get millions of dollars to help them clean up their homes. Governor Ron DeSantis made that announcement in Punta Gorda yesterday. The money will come from the Florida Disaster Fund. It has raised more than $45 million so far. Two million of that will go to those first responders. Florida Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed sent a letter asking for federal help for farmers. She wants a USDA secretarial disaster designation for farms in 17 counties. That includes Lee, Collier, Charlotte, DeSoto, Hendry and Sarasota counties. Freed says preliminary damage assessments show farms in those areas do meet the requirement to get that federal help. Well, 607 right now, Election Day is now less than four weeks away. Governor Ron DeSantis says he's expanding voting access in counties that were devastated during Hurricane Ian. The governor's executive order expands the number of days and locations for early voting. It also allows people to call the supervisor of elections office and request a mail-in ballot over the phone instead of that signature requirement. Jenya Coulter, the senior elections analyst for the nonpartisan group OSET, she used to work in Polk County Elections Office and she helped to run elections in the aftermath of hurricanes previously. She's urging voters to take advantage of the additional early voting access. It also frees things up for election offices because early voting locations almost always have the best trained poll workers. They may not have a huge staff, but they've got a very experienced staff so uh, that is good information. And if you need more information on uh, who's running this election cycle and what other races you need to vote on, uh, keep that in mind. It's on our website, fox4now.com. The order that was passed also waives training requirements for those poll workers. Well, it's a situation that so many are finding themselves in after the hurricane, no home no car and nowhere to go. Well, there are emergency shelters all over Southwest Florida to give people a roof and four walls. And one of the largest is the American Red Cross shelter at Hertz Arena. Fox Force Calvin Lewis spoke with some of those people that are staying in the shelter to get a little perspective on what it's like. There's a lot of people that are stranded here that have absolutely nothing and no way. Inside Hertz Arena, you'll find survivors of Hurricane Ian with all sorts of backgrounds, like Roland Flores, a veteran who was previously at another shelter. I'm hoping not to be here for more than an, another week. And uh, I guess the VA is trying to, you know, get things worked out. They're putting some of us vets up in a, a hotel or something. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. At least I'll be someplace where it's safe. It's been two weeks since Hurricane Ian made landfall, and survivors are still trying to figure out how they are going to recover. But with each passing day and every hour, tensions are getting higher. It's like no one cares, but they, but they act like they do. Charles Terrell is another one of those who sought refuge at the arena. Me, I'm not a homeless, but half these people that came here, they were homeless before they got here. And then you, and then you do have genuine people that lost their homes and this and that. People like Brittany Allen, a wife and mother to seven children. We're, we sleep on an ice rink, so <laughs> to try to get off the ice would be amazing. While resources have been provided, like hot meals, running water, and electricity, she says conditions have progressively worsened over time. It is completely packed. There are still those sleeping on the floor. Um, you know, there are still those sleeping up in the stands. Um, a lot more people are sick, a lot more cough. The elderly are, you know, they actually took three people to the hospital while we were here due to dehydration. And at the same time, efforts are being made to help those survivors find their footing post shelter. We also have now our caseworkers that are coming in and these caseworkers are assigned to the individuals and will help them find a transition plan. So once they move on from the shelter, they know exactly what's going to happen. In the meantime, these survivors will keep taking it day by day. But still, we keep fighting, we keep plugging on. You know, we're going to get it done one way or another.
but that's because that's who we are, you know. In Lee County, Calvin Lewis, Fox 4. And the Red Cross says they will keep Hertz Arena open as a shelter for as long as necessary. Right now, they have about 400 people sheltered. Uh, they do have a capacity of about 1,000. Lee County Domestic Animal Services is working to reunite animals with their owners. The department is asking people to turn in stray animals. They will be processed, and if no owner can be found, the rescuer may adopt the animal. The commercial fishing industry here in southwest Florida has some new challenges to deal with because of Ian. The storm surge took out most of the shrimping industry along Fort Myers Beach. Get this, of the 50 boats in port during Ian, only two of them can be used for fishing right now. On Pine Island, four of the five fish houses were destroyed. All of the commercial docks around them are gone, and the grouper boats were severely damaged. The owner of Island Seafood Market on Matt Lachey says the area's identity is in jeopardy here. Fishing industry and commercial industries in this area, we're going to lose the founding of what founded this area. I mean, our commercial fishermen on Pine Island especially, when the original infrastructure on this island was set to get catch from fishermen to market. So, I mean, the culture, the history of what made this area unique in the first place is... is gone or going to be gone and I don't want to see that happen. He and other fishermen hope the state and federal government will help them by declaring a fishery disaster order. And the FWC Division of Marine Fisheries said this in an email to Fox 4. FWC has already been in contact with our partners in the industry and are coordinating the next steps. As soon as a rapid assessment is conducted, we anticipate that the state will be requesting federal fisheries disaster declaration from the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. The harbor master on Fort Myers Beach appeared in a Twitter video warning people about what's in the harbor in the Matanzas Bay mooring field. His name is Austin Gilchrist. He said that the mooring field is closed for now and the no wake zones are still in place even if you don't see the buoys and the, <clears throat> the signs up, excuse me. Gilchrist said watch out for debris from the damaged docks, adding that there aren't really any docks for boats to stop at right now, so it's probably best to stay out of the area. All right, as power is restored, main roads are cleared, we are seeing communities across southwest Florida opening up for residents to slowly come back home. Yeah, for the first time, people who live near Bonita Beach have unrestricted access. Fox 4's John Barron is there live as people start to return to the area. John. Yeah, so Chris and Amy, you guys were pointing out something very uh, interesting. Obviously, you were talking about restoring some of that power. And now we're seeing it much like Fort Myers Beach. A lot of those residents now getting an opportunity to see kind of a sense of normalcy, a small bit of it as they start to actually right now, the sheriff's department actually getting ready to tow away the checkpoint that they have, the trailer that's been out here. We're seeing that right now as they're getting ready to just head on out and you're going to have no restrictions with this check in for some of these residents. And we were told seven o'clock, but actually we've been seen some cars kind of filter in early this morning around six o'clock start to kind of go out there whether or not they're construction crews or not but they've been going out there already so we're already kind of seeing that start to filter out here in as we were saying like Fort Myers Beach those residents are actually some of them are going to get the first chance to kind of assess some of that damage right now and get an opportunity to kind of get out there and see what's really happened to their community although it seems like when we get out there at seven o'clock, we'll be able to show you guys a little bit more on the island. So we'll be able to actually get out there and show you guys a little bit more of what we're seeing. But so far, this is what we're seeing just right now this morning. Like I keep saying, the, the checkpoint now getting ready to actually filter out from the sheriff's department. And then we're actually seeing some cars kind of filter in. So we'll try to get there to talk with some of these residents about what they're seeing so far this morning as they try to get back to a sense of normalcy here in southwest Florida. For now, live here at Bonita Beach, John Barron, Fox 4. Thanks for the look there. FWC has a hotline where people can report boats and other vessels that were set loose during the hurricane. The storm surge sent thousands of them out to sea. It pushed some to shore and damaged others in marinas. The phone number is here on your screen. You can call that number Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. You will need to give FWC some information like the registration number of the boat, if you have it, the location and a description of the boat.
Right now we're looking live from the tower cam on top of our studios here at Fox 4 and we are dealing with a little bit of patchy fog along with some wet roadways here this morning and after the rainfall that moved through southwest Florida yesterday. We're waiting for the arrival of the cold front and out ahead of it we still get that moisture pooled up. That's why we're warm and humid this morning and that's why we've also got some of that fog. You see the radar sweeping around here. That's all false return along I-4 and south of Orlando. But as we dip down into the southern parts of Collier County here, a couple of very light showers near Port of the Islands and Everglades City. And as we move northbound, you see a couple of those showers out over the Gulf waters. Again, this is false return here along the Peace and Mayaka rivers. And as we go through the uh, next 24 to 48 hours, we still have a chance in the afternoon as that front hasn't cleared yet to see some showers and thunderstorms. Dry air arrives here on Sunday. Now, the Naples ring gauge is still missing after the hurricane. We're still waiting for it to come back online at Fort Myers. We picked up 0.04 officially at Page Field, so we're starting to replace some of those sensors and getting that data back up and running. We've got 70 degrees in Clewis, and that's our cool spot, mid to upper 70s to the south. But with the moisture in place, you see the patchy fog here. Bonita Springs, Immokalee to LaBelle, 5 to 3 miles visibility, and dense fog advisories up in the northern part of the state here this morning. As far as our forecast here today, 87 isolated storms at sunset at 7 o'clock. Today is the last sunset, 7 o'clock or later. Tomorrow, it's 659. Those days continue to get shorter. As far as our temperatures, 87 is right on track for where we should be this time of year. The record not that long ago, 2018, where we hit 92 degrees. So the setup, there's the front attached to a low that's between the Outer Banks and Bermuda. Area high pressure is going to try to nudge that front to the south, but part of the reason it's not going to move all that quickly, we have Tropical Storm Carl still in the Bay of Campeche, and you can see that moisture still extending back over the Florida Straits. As we look at the overall trend here over the next couple of days. You see the moisture enough to fuel some showers and thunderstorms here today and again for tomorrow as the wind comes across the state. By Sunday, we start to see a little drier air move in and that should keep the rain chances down. To walk you through today and the start of your weekend, look at the timeline here. 7, 8 o'clock is when we expect some showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder and they're going to last here past midnight. So we're going to keep a chance of some rain overnight and tomorrow coming across the state lined up along the southwest Florida coastline and then by Sunday, Again, some of that drier air begins to move in. It's just going to take a little while here uh, for it to arrive. Now, as far as Carl, the 5 a.m. advisory, you see its movement here over the last couple of days. Southeast at 6. This one will continue to move into Mexico and become a remnant low here over the weekend. I want to get you over to your Ingman Marine forecast today. A lot of you are still part of the recovery efforts and getting supplies out to the islands. Be careful of that storm debris. As far as the winds, though, no issues. Your seven day forecast taking you through the weekend. Check out what happens next week. After near average temperatures Monday and Tuesday, bam, cold front on Wednesday. We're going to be in the upper 50s here as we wake up on Thursday morning. Well, a 74 year old man had been living in his destroyed home since Ian came through. This morning, we'll show you how he finally got the help he needed. And it is just now turning 619 on this Friday morning. Here are your traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them.
622 is the time right now. Here's a look at some of the other top stories we're tracking for you right now. 99 out of 100 members of European Parliament say Russia should be considered a terrorist regime. Today they voted to support a resolution that also calls on Russia to withdraw its forces from Ukraine. Turkey did not cast a vote. There is added tension along South Korea's border with the North this morning. South Korea says the North fired another missile and artillery shells today. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says some of the shells landed inside a buffer zone, which is supposed to be a neutral area between the countries. And today, the University of Michigan will release its monthly consumer sentiment report. It measures how people feel about the state of the economy and the expectations they have going forward. The report is expected to reflect increased concern about inflation. We're so happy to report that hope is back for a 74-year-old man living in his devastated, flooded home on Matt Lachey. I introduced you to Johnny earlier this week. He told Fox 4 he was desperate, he needed help, about a half a dozen members of the Florida State Firefighters Association, they stepped up and gave him that help yesterday. They spent the day clearing out furniture and ripping out drywall from his home. So his name is Johnny Glisson. This is his home and he has been in it for the past two weeks since the hurricane hit, living in sheer devastation. He does not have homeowners insurance and he wasn't sure what he would do up until this point. He said he contacted FEMA, but he hasn't heard back yet. Uh, so. Uh, the firefighters answered the call. Again, they showed up and they helped him clean up and he couldn't be more thankful. I didn't think I was going to be able to get through this. I kept saying I am, I am. But then in my heart, I just start saying, Johnny, it's too much. Mm, there they are. So much mud and water went into his home. He had about a foot of flooding. And again, he lives alone and doesn't have homeowners insurance. The Firefighters Association stepped in, though. They've been working nonstop to help people like him. Their next mission is to fix roofs for other firefighters who need help in Port Charlotte. Laundry detergent company Tide has a couple of places where people can go and wash their clothes. Tide has trucks at the Walmart on McCall Road in Inglewood and in North Fort Myers at the Walmart on Pine Island Road. This is free for anyone who doesn't have a way to wash their clothes right now. The trucks will be open from 9 until 5. A section of Price Boulevard is now open after being washed out by Hurricane Ian. I'll tell you about the ongoing road repairs in Northport.
Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Right now, we're looking live here at the Bayfront Inn. We're a little foggy out there around Southwest Florida. If you haven't stepped outside, we got some wet roadways and it's a little humid. We're waiting for that front to arrive, but compared to what we were thinking earlier this week, got to be a little slower. We've got a little bit of a transition to get through this weekend before we see the drier conditions Sunday, Monday. But don't worry, in our seven day, we've got another front that's going to be a big one. As far as what we've got here right now, you see a lot of false return from Sarasota to Fort Pierce. As you dive down to the Florida Keys, that's where the heaviest rain is located over the straits there south of Isla Morada and and Key Largo. We've had a few very light showers move here along Tamiami Trail, but as you work your way up the coastline, this is all false return from Palmdale to Arcadia, but you see those real showers mixed in out over the Gulf waters. So today uh, we'll see isolated showers and thunderstorms about a 30 to 40 percent chance, but we are starting our morning above our average of 71. We're at 74 in Fort Myers and with the humidity around, you see that limited visibility visibility now down to a mile in LaBelle, a little under four for Immokalee. Let's get you over to the computer model here for today. And by lunchtime, not a lot happening, but watch this evening, seven to eight o'clock, some showers and thunderstorms that linger here past midnight and then the same idea here for Saturday as we'll see that wind across the state driving what wet weather arrives right along our coast. Here's your forecast here for today. You see the mix of sun and clouds temperatures this afternoon up around 87 exactly where we should be for this time of year. All right, Trent, thank you. This is new from overnight. Fort Myers firefighters work to save several pets from a house fire. Yeah, this happened early this morning on Sunset Road. It's just south of Lee Memorial Hospital near downtown Fort Myers, right off of Cleveland Ave. The fire chief says it was an electrical fire that started in the attic of this home. Now, the woman who lives inside was taken to the hospital. The chief says she is expected to be okay, but she's being treated for smoke inhalation because she kept going back inside the house while it was burning to try and save her animals. Several of her animals unfortunately died from the smoke. Firefighters, though, were able to save a number of ferrets, a dog, and a cat. Well, this morning we are tracking another sign of Ian recovery. A main road in Northport will reopen this morning. Yeah, Price Boulevard suffered extensive damage from Hurricane Ian, but now we're starting to see traffic flow once again. And that's where we join Fox 4's Alexandra Ronhell. She's live there right off Price Boulevard. Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Yeah, Price Boulevard was completely washed out by Hurricane Ian. Uh, it was under several feet of water, which caused damage and erosion. But now you can kind of see this section has now been fixed. But it wasn't the only section that was damaged over here on this side. I want you to take a look. This is past North Race Street, and you can still see that there's construction that is ongoing on this side. And it's close to traffic on the other side of the street. You, there's several stores on that side, so you know it's causing some inconvenience for some of the homes in this area and the traffic. We have images of the flooding. The residents of Northport experience homes near Price Boulevard and throughout the city were heavily flooded with water reaching several feet in their homes. The city says some areas saw water levels of 8 to 10 feet. By far the most they've seen. It took several days for the water to recede following cleanup efforts. They got started on this road. Now the city says they're still working to fix the remaining sections of Price Boulevard toward Sumter Boulevard. The city is asking people to drive with caution as road repairs will be ongoing. Again, we'll keep you updated on the updates for the rest of Price Boulevard. We'll let you know when those will open up. For now, live in Northport, Alexandra Rangel, Fox 4. Thanks for that, Alex. A sense of urgency was felt by a volunteer organization in Harlem Heights. They're working to restore so many uh, of the homes that were destroyed by Hurricane Ian. Our Colton Chavez was out with some of those volunteers. They're from Crisis Relief and Recovery. This morning, he's showing us why a helping hand could really make a difference for so many of these families. It's kind of scare. Five-year-old Martha, translating for her grandma who only speaks Spanish, says she was with her family when floodwaters rushed into their home in Harlem Heights. The water was here and we were sleeping Where's the football? Sleeping on higher ground, Martha tells me, overnight across the street at the Kelly Road soccer complex as their entire neighborhood was underwater. <laughs> Two weeks later and the floodwaters are gone and organizations like Crisis Relief and Recovery are helping Martha and her family remove everything that was lost. What we try to do first is identify the most vulnerable populations that have had the greatest need and been hit the hardest. Member Ethan Wendell says there's no denying the community of Harlem Heights was hit hard. 
leaving more families needing help than Ethan has volunteers to cover. The urgency is that mold is spreading, actively spreading, and we're in the position right now where if we don't get some stuff done, we're going to turn into a health crisis. Ethan says CRR handles everything from roofs to indoor restoration, but what they need most is helping hands. These crews are, are muck and gut crews. They're, they're bringing stuff out of the house. These are things that almost anybody can do. It's not highly technical contractor work. But it's work that, if not completed soon, could be made worse by the return of afternoon storms. But now that these rains have started back up, every day is another, it's like another disaster because they clean up stuff in the house, then their roof leaks again. So if you're looking to get involved and you want to volunteer, it's easy. All you have to do is come right here to the Harlem Heights Community Center where groups are meeting at both 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day. Every day we'll be starting teams to, to, to partner with our leaders, with other organizations to get this community restored as quickly as possible. In Harlem Heights, Colton Chavez, Fox 4. And a couple of organizations will get together today to give out something we keep hearing people need right now, shoes and socks. Yeah, the Cajun Navy and the charity Samaritan's Feet will be in Fort Myers to give out 10,000 pairs of new shoes and 28,000 pairs of socks. Yeah, they'll also have shirts, backpacks, hats, purses, and other clothing. It'll happen today from 9 to 5 at Broadway Community Church in Fort Myers. That's on Broadway Circle. Well, 634 is the time right now. The Florida Medical Examiner's Commission says the number of confirmed deaths from Hurricane Ian is now at 108, and exactly half of them are in Lee County. Yeah, Fox 4 evening anchor Nadine Yanez spoke with family and friends of loved ones who passed away, including the friend of one woman with a sister and cousin celebrating her 40th birthday on Fort Myers Beach, another whose uncle didn't survive the storm surge on Matt Lachey, each one sharing their story with her. At 66 years old, Mike Verdream had a dream of living on the water in Matt Lachey. Moving to Southwest Florida in 2021, just three hours down the road from his niece and goddaughter, Stacy, whom he helped raise after her dad died when she was just two weeks old. He's always been just a really big part of my life and just kind of always, sorry, always there for me. Um, you know, when I didn't have a dad to do things with Stacy last speaking with her uncle the Wednesday morning Hurricane Ian hit. I woke up and I just felt like I need to give him a call and so I gave him a call on Wednesday morning. I spoke with him for um, three minutes and he was he kind of gave me his plan. He said that he was staying there. If it got too bad, he was going to go to a friend's home that um, was two stories. And if it got really bad, he was had a friend that had a truck and they were going to get out of there. It wasn't until several silent days, missed phone calls and miscommunication from neighbors on Matt Lachey, Stacy and her family got the call from the sheriff. It wasn't until the next day um, when we got some more information and we found out that he was found on Friday, um, September 30th, um, and he was a victim of the storm surge, so he never really made it through the storm. Mike Verdream's picture now honored on a growing memorial here in downtown Fort Myers, now one of the 105 people claimed by Hurricane Ian and counting. But loved ones say these are not just numbers. They are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, all lives that need to be remembered. Nichelle Harris Miles was actually on Fort Myers Beach with her sister and two cousins when Ian made landfall. She was here celebrating her 40th birthday, a ticket bought by her daughter, according to close family friend Danette Marshall. It's just a terrifying, terrible situation to go on a vacation and to not make it home to see your kids. Um, and the sad thing is, is her daughter bought her her ticket for her birthday to go. Inside the second story hotel, Nichelle, her sister and cousins tied themselves together with sheets as the storm surge came through. That's when the roof collapsed. Nichelle dying days after turning 40 with her sister witnessing it all. Everybody, you know, they say, why did you go? Why did you go? Why did they go? And they went because they were told by the Airbnb people that, you know, it doesn't get that bad here. 
you know, it's not gonna, it's not calling to come. And when they got there, everything was boarded up and she's not a number or anybody else who lost their life. They're not a number. They're somebody. And they have somebody out there that loves them, that calls them mom, calls them sister, auntie, uncle, you know, all that. I think the message here in all of this is that, um, People will hear this and see this and, you know, the people who live in Florida might think twice um, and hopefully evacuate the next time a hurricane is coming our way um, so other family members don't have to go through this. And I think, too, it's so important to, like, help your neighbor. Like, if your neighbor doesn't have a way out, scoop them up on your way when you're evacuating and and take them with you. Um, I just think by telling this story, if we can save one person's life, um, then that means everything. That was Nadine Giannis reporting so many lives impacted by this storm. In fact, this morning, thousands of people are still in shelters in Southwest Florida. That means there are volunteers from all over the country helping them. Our national correspondent Axel Tercios is in Fort Myers Beach to show us how evacuated families are doing. We're worried about are we going to be able to get another place or housing? Playing with her six-year-old son, Derek, is how Emily Montgomery tries to forget, at least for a minute, the new but harsh reality of her life. We never anticipated being in this shelter, but it is, you know, it's a challenge with four kids. Montgomery and her family are staying at a shelter being managed by the American Red Cross. There's always an ear to cry on. They're really good about that. They've taken good care of the kids. The family recently moved back to Lee County, Florida. And while looking for a place to live, they stayed at a hotel. That hotel building was battered by Hurricane Ian. This is not my first hurricane. My husband's not, he's like me. We've been through all the hurricanes. This is the worst we have ever been through. The Montgomery family rode out the storm in their hotel room. How are you and your family doing right now? Stressed. <laughs> and coming out of that, what do you call it, um, shock, it started to set in the new normal that you can't go back to what we love down on Fort Myers Beach. It's not there. I lost people that I knew on Fort Myers Beach that didn't make it through the storm. Since then, they relocated to this shelter, one of three centers the American Red Cross still has open. The individuals that we have here have come from all over the Fort Myers region, and these are people who have lost it all. Tiffany Gonzalez from the American Red Cross says their goal is to provide a safe space to sleep, food to eat, and medical and mental health services. We are not planning on closing anytime soon. We are here as long as they need us as the Red Cross, but we do have our caseworkers coming in, and they will start helping create a transition plan for these residents that are here. Volunteers have fanned out throughout the devastated areas. People from numerous states who left their lives behind to come to Florida and help those who most need it, which include cleaning efforts and repairs at shelters. Meanwhile, temporary repairs to the Sanibel Island Causeway are allowing trucks and first responders to finally access the island, giving utility workers the chance to restore power. A community bound by tragedy, working together as one. For Fort Myers be strong, for Southwest Florida strong, we will come back. Now let's, or I'm sorry, the American Red Cross says people who want to make a donation or volunteer can start that process by going to redcross.org. Now let's move to a different group of people. They have a place to stay, but they need help getting money to clean or fix their homes. Several disaster recovery centers will be open today in Southwest Florida. Kyle McGivern is in Fort Myers, where the Department of Economic Opportunity has people on the ground. I'm Kylie McGivern. At FEMA's Disaster Recovery Center at Lakes Regional Library, DEO is acting as a critical piece to help people get back on their feet. People who lost not only their home, but their job. Recently lost my job due to Ian. Raquel De Heredia worked on Captiva in the hospitality industry and tried to apply for unemployment over the phone. You're on hold forever and, or they kick you off. I told him my problems and he was like, come on in, let me help you out. We're inside one of the DEO trailers right now as employees are working to help claimants file for disaster unemployment assistance as we speak. 
They're also helping with applications for bridge loans and housing assistance funds. What's it like to just have people here like, we will help you, we will walk you through I, I was amazed. I mean, I think between the linemen, the different first responders coming from out, it's, it's, it's nice, you know? I'm sorry. It's just, What's coming? I'm emotional to see all the support. It's hard. You, everybody has a, a tragedy. Katherine Nelson with DEO says the stories stick with her. From watching someone die in front of them that they couldn't help to a 78-year-old man who was swimming in the water for five hours before he was rescued. And it's just, you feel their pain and how some still have just this positive look of thanking us for being here. And I just want to thank them for being alive and making it. As of Wednesday night, they've served 771 people. The internet, the power, some are still without power. Um, they're without transportation because their cars were flooded, uh, which is why the city buses are going and gathering them. So no one is turned away without their problem being resolved. Disaster unemployment assistance is available until April 1st of next year. If unemployment continues to be a direct result of Hurricane Ian, the deadline to submit a claim is December 30th. In Lee County, with photojournalist Randy Wright, I'm Kylie McGivern. Well, Florida Power and Light customers that need financial assistance as they recover from Hurricane Ian can take advantage of the company's Care to Share program. This is a partnership with local Salvation Army chapters. Customers with lower incomes can get up to $2,000 for electrical repairs that are needed for crews to safely restore the power to your home. If you want to apply for this assistance or if you want to donate to Care to Share, you can visit fpl.com slash help. Florida's Gulf Coast, of course, has been a top retirement destination for decades, providing affordable living options in over 55 mobile home communities. But as Adam Walser reports this morning, Hurricane Ian has made some retirees question whether the risk and the rising cost to live here in Florida is worth it. My team investigator Adam Walser. Thousands of retirees from all over the country move to the Tampa Bay region each year, often seeking good weather and low cost of living. But now rising prices and the aftermath of Hurricane Ian threaten to price many people out of paradise. The clean, clear air, the miles of blue water. This 1960s film was produced by developers, hoping to attract retirees to Florida's Gulf Coast. And we really have a ball down here with our boating and our fishing and our clam bakes. You saw P.T. Barnum level hucksterism of just trying to lure people down. AARP State Director Jeff Johnson says generations of seniors flocked to Florida, seeking good weather and affordable housing, often found in over 55 mobile home communities. Good, solid middle class folks from the Midwest and the Northeast would move down and mobile homes were actually the affordable housing option. But this is today's reality in Inglewood, Florida, a community where 59% are 65 and older and the median household income is 30% below the national average. It was complete devastation here and uh, you know, I think there's probably 80-85% of the homes have major damage. So. Hurricane Ian crumpled carport covers. That is my roof right there. Roofs are missing and waterlogged cabinets, furniture and carpet hauled to the curb. Days after the storm, relatives tarp roofs and make repairs, preserving what's left of homes ripped apart by 120 mile an hour winds. Do you feel like sometimes people have to choose to a less safe structure because of the, you know, the high cost of everything here? Oh yeah, very much so. Indiana native Kim Lopez says her finances were already stretched. It's no longer the Florida that was here 10 years ago when I moved down. And she believes Ian's destruction will make it worse. They have already said that insurance will be canceled. They will not insure. Here at the park? Here at the park, yes. What does that mean to you? No insurance on my mobile home. Out of state license plates. A lot from Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Illinois. And regional accents from thousands of miles away. Massachusetts, uh, New York, New Jersey. Are proof positive people still flock to Florida. Steve West moved from Massachusetts. I mean, they all come down here for one reason, to enjoy it the rest of their life. The price of paradise has skyrocketed. 
even for decades old mobile homes in flood zones. A month ago, these places were selling for $280,000, $300,000. Is there affordable housing anywhere around here? Not around here, no. None. Linda Gibson from northern Indiana says mobile homes in her community were worth more than a four bedroom house in her hometown. It is less expensive for where they, from where they live. But it's driving up the prices for all of us. Probably so. <laughs> That's what the big problem is right now, getting people to, to come and tarp. Alan Kruthus, who did snow removal for an Illinois Public Works Department for 40 years, moved to Inglewood in 2017. We were lucky to find this place, but a lot of people aren't so lucky. With thousands of homes destroyed, lower inventory could push prices and rents even higher. A lot of folks down here aren't living on a huge nest egg of retirement savings. They're living on a, a fixed income of a pension and Social Security. Some over 55 parks will likely be sold to developers, and some owners are already considering walking away. Is anybody, you know, talking about just throwing in the towel here? Yes, there's some people who already made that decision. The risk no longer worth the reward. What do you think? You're going to be here five, ten years from now? I don't know. Time will tell. <laughs> It's hard to believe that everything you see has been built within so few short years. But if history is any indication, the impact of Hurricane Ian will be temporary. I think that Florida remains irresistible to a lot of people and that a few years down the road, you'll start to see Florida's numbers of new retirees tick back up. I'm going to rebuild and stay. I'm not going anywhere. Price of paradise? <laughs> yeah, price of paradise. The very things that lure people to paradise. It's all about weather and water. Can also drive them away. I'm my team investigator Adam Walser with photojournalist Matt McGlashan. All right, take a look at this. This is some video from Matt Lachey Pine Island Fire Control District. The agency posted drone video from Flamingo Bay. It's one of the hardest hit areas, and they say that they're going to post more videos to show community members who are not able to return to their homes what it looks like. Hopefully, uh, they say you'll be able to, you know, focus in and see what your home looks like. Today, police in North Carolina will be releasing more information about a shooting that killed five people, including an off-duty police officer. It took police several hours to arrest the suspect, who they only described as a juvenile male. Two others were wounded. Trent? All right, right now we're looking live here from top of our studios in Cape Coral where you can see some beautiful blues, little uh, orange there on the horizon. Uh, but bottom line, it is going to be a rather humid morning as we're waiting for a cold front to bring a little bit of an impact. Now, earlier this week, we thought this cold front was going to really cool us off. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for the next one, which is on Wednesday. This front is actually going to kind of hit a wall, if you will. I'll show you why here in just a moment. This morning, though, you can see some false return up around I-4, but a few little showers here along 41 between Port of the Islands and Everglades City. This is false return around Port Charlotte and Punta Gorda, but you can see a mixture of some real showers, some upper level showers coming the opposite direction. So kind of a messy setup here early. Now officially yesterday we picked up 0.04 in Fort Myers, the rain gauge down at the Naples Airport, still waiting for it to come back online. Our temperatures are 70 in Palmdale and Cluson, so almost the upper 60s in some spots, but otherwise uh, we're running there in the mid 70s. With the moisture in place, patchy fog visibility a little limited here from Benita Springs to Immokalee and in the northern part of the state we've actually got uh, dense fog advisories here as that moisture is still pooled ahead of that cold front. Now we will see some isolated storms later on today. Those could last uh, from 8 until midnight. Some of those showers lingering a little late uh, at high of 87 is exactly where we should be this time of year, but it's below record breaking temperatures, which we saw earlier this week when we reached 94. So here's the setup cold front off the East Coast area. High pressure trying to shove that front to the south. The problem. Tropical Storm Carl still in the Bay of Campeche. See that moisture tail lingering here as that front moves south. It's hitting that. It's kind of like a roadblock and the high is not strong enough to push it on through. Uh, so we're in that time of year where these fronts look good on paper and the computer model runs, but Mother Nature still trying to transition into fall, uh, at least this far south, and I uh, will see it on Wednesday, though. But in the meantime, today, sea showers and thunderstorms late 8 o'clock, some of those lingering through midnight tomorrow. Northeasterly flow will drive showers and thunderstorms right along our coast, but by Sunday, we begin to dry out. Let's break it down here a little closer up. I want to let this play out, and we're going to stop it right around 8. You see those showers and thunderstorms between Highlands County, Glades, Hendry. They'll linger here 
here as they die out through midnight and then watch tomorrow. Here comes the northeasterly breeze, but with that moisture just to our south, showers and thunderstorms along the coast, about a 40% chance. And again, it's all because of Carl, which is moving slowly off to the southeast towards Yucatan and Mexico. It'll dive south here and become a remnant low in the days ahead. Green Marine forecast sees foot or less. Wind will not be an issue. You might have to dodge a thunderstorm late, but just watch out for the storm debris if you are running supplies out to the islands or part of the recovery efforts here in town. So for this afternoon, we are going to go up to 87 degrees overnight tonight. We're going to dip down into the low 70s in the seven day forecast. We're going to keep temperatures near average here through the weekend. There's a drier weather and then look at Wednesday. Hopefully this one is the front to really bring us some cool temperatures. We're talking about highs in the 70s for the last two days there of the seven day forecast. We're going to wake up in the mid to upper 50s on Thursday morning. At 6.53, here's a look at traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them.
How about this? This morning, the Naples Zoo will open for the first time since Ian. The zoo says it had some flooding because of storm surge as well as some wind damage, but they say all the animals are safe and they've cleaned up the debris so they can open up once again. Take a look at your screen. We have the address for the zoo and the phone number if you'd like to call and donate to help the zoo recover. The zoo will open at 9 this morning. Still to come on Fox 4 Morning News at 7, a Southwest Florida woman is using her love of cooking to feed families and first responders after Hurricane Ian. This morning she has meals that are ready to be served. Fox 4's Lauren Petrelli will have her story live from Fort Myers Beach in just a few minutes. A section of Price Boulevard is now open after being washed out by Hurricane Ian. I'll tell you all about the ongoing road repairs in Northport. And a sense of relief this morning. Crews are back at work trying to restore power to more people on Pine Island. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do. Moving on because of Ian this morning, where you can go to get your children into a new school if the storm has forced you to move. 
Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. And good morning. Thanks so much for joining us for Fox 4 Morning News at 7 today. I'm Amy Wegman. I'm Chris Shaw. We have a full morning of Ian recovery for you today from roads to schools to airports. There are several new reopenings we need to tell you about. Yeah, we also want to take you into communities that still need help. They're still working to recover. They have a long road in front of them. And one of the things that we've noticed they've been dealing with the past couple of days is rain. Uh, let's go check in with our certified meteorologist. Meteorologist Trent Eric right away. I know yesterday was a very rainy day. Trent, are we in store for more of that today? Not quite as rainy. Uh, we will see some scattered showers and thunderstorms for sure, especially later in the day. As the cold front we've been talking about all week is not going to be as powerful as we thought as far as sliding all the way through the state uh, by tomorrow. Uh, the problem is it's going to be blocked by moisture that's actually attached to Tropical Storm Carl in the Bay of Campeche. So it slowed the front down a little bit. It's that time of year where these fronts struggle to get all the way through the state. So what it's going to do for us. You can see the heavier rain in the Florida Straits as we move up between Marco Island and Naples. You see a couple of light showers there near Everglades City. This is all false return, but we have a couple of real showers kind of embedded in. And then if you watch close enough, you see some of that higher level moisture, a little light drizzle moving in our direction as well. Our current temperature is anywhere from 70 in Palmdale and Clusen to 75 Cape Coral, 77 in Marco Island. And the visibility really limited here along State Road 29 as uh, we've got it as low as 2 and 9 up in Northport. With that moisture around here today. Uh, it's going to be later in the day. Noon, lunchtime, we're all right. And then you look at 7, 8 o'clock showers, even a few thunderstorms develop. They linger through midnight. And then tomorrow, enough moisture in a northeasterly breeze. They're going to be lining up again along our coastline. Let's get you out the door here hour by hour. Good mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures up to 87 here today, but a stronger cold front is in the seven day. We'll let you know when that will arrive coming up in a bit. All right, Trent, see you soon. This is new from overnight. Fort Myers firefighters work to save several pets from a house fire. Yeah, it happened early this morning on Sunset Road. It's just south of Lee Memorial Hospital off Cleveland Ave, close to downtown Fort Myers. The fire chief says this was an electrical fire that started in the attic of this home. The woman who lives there was taken to the hospital, but the chief says she should be okay. She's being treated for smoke inhalation because she kept going back in and out of the house as it was burning, trying to save her animals. Several animals unfortunately died from the smoke, but firefighters say they were able to save a number of ferrets, a dog, and a cat. Well, sadly, we have seen so much destruction over the past two weeks. We want to make sure we highlight when there are signs of recovery. And this morning, that's happening in Northport, where a major road is opening this morning. Yeah, Price Boulevard had pretty extensive damage from Hurricane Ian, but now we are starting to see traffic flow once again. Fox Force Alexander Ron Hell is live right off of Price Boulevard, and this should make people's commute just a bit easier today. I'll yeah, hopefully it does uh, pretty soon. Uh, this section of the Price Boulevard was underwater. It caused a lot of erosion and damage, but now this section has been fixed. However, there's other sections to Price Boulevard that still need some rebuilding. To I'm going to take you over onto this side. You can see that it's still closed. There's a road closure here. Um, we actually just spoke to a lady who had to be dropped off here. She was on her way to the bus stop and since the road is closed, she has to walk all the way down. So she's just one of the people that's waiting for this section to be open. The city says that this section could take up to a week to fix. We have images of the flooding. The residents of Northport experience homes near Price Boulevard and throughout the city were heavily flooded with water reaching several feet in their homes. The city says some areas saw water levels of 8 to 10 feet. By far the most they've seen. It took several days for the water to recede following cleanup efforts. They got started on this road. Now the city says they're still working to fix the remaining sections of Price Boulevard toward Sumter Boulevard. The city is asking people to drive with caution as construction is on going again. We'll keep you updated as soon as the rest of Price Boulevard is completed. For now, live in Northport, Alexandra Rangel, Fox 4. All right, thanks for that update, Alex. Well, the election is now less than four weeks away, and Governor DeSantis is expanding voting access in counties that were devastated by Hurricane Ian. So this is an executive order, and it was signed uh, this morning. It actually it was signed yesterday, I'm sure. It uh, expands the number of days and locations for early voting. It also allows people to call the Supervisor of Elections Office and request a mail-in ballot over the phone instead of that signature requirement. 
Jenny Coulter, the senior elections analyst for a nonpartisan group, OSET. She used to work in Polk County Elections Office, and she helped to run elections in the aftermath of hurricanes, which is, of course, what we're going to be dealing with here. She's urging voters in southwest Florida to take advantage of the additional early voting time. It also frees things up for election offices because early voting locations almost always have the best trained poll workers. They may not have a huge staff, but they've got a very experienced staff. Florida Ag Commissioner Nikki Freed sent a letter. Uh, actually, let me back up first. The order also waives training requirements for poll workers so that they can help as we try to staff more early voting sites. Now back to Florida Ag Commissioner Nikki Freed. She sent a letter uh, asking for federal help for farmers. She wants a USDA secretarial disaster designation for farms in 17 counties. That would include Lee, Collier, Charlotte, DeSoto, Hendry, and Sarasota counties here in southwest Florida. Nikki Freed says preliminary damage assessments show that farms in those areas meet the requirement to get federal help. First responders who have storm damage will get millions of dollars to help them clean their homes. Governor Ron DeSantis made that announcement in Punta Gorda yesterday. The money will come from the Florida Disaster Fund. It has raised more than $45 million and $2 million of that will go to these first responders. The Lee County School District will do air quality tests on 38 schools today with the hope that those schools can reopen next week. Yeah, so the plan right now is to open Lee County schools in phases, not all at once. The superintendent, Dr. Christopher Bernier, made that announcement yesterday. Yeah, he says schools will open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. He says the district will find temporary buildings for the schools with the worst damage. So uh, here's a look for the plan for next week. On Monday, 11 elementary, two middle, uh, schools in Lee County are back in class. On Tuesday of next week, 10 elementary, one middle, two title one, and two high schools reopen. So the two high schools are Cypress Lake, which is in Fort Myers, and Ida Baker in Cape Coral. You can find a complete list of the schools that are opening on Monday and Tuesday on our website. Just go to fox4now.com. If you're wondering why your child's school is not on the list when you go log on to our website, Lee County Schools put together a video detailing what it calls the nine safety criteria that a building has to meet before students can return in person. You can find all of that information uh, when you go to the Lee County School District website. It's leeschools.net. Now let's talk about families who had to relocate because of the storm. They can send their children to a school that's closer to where they live now. Yesterday, the school district opened up offices to make it easier for those parents to re-enroll their children. And we spoke to a family who chose to switch to online learning. A man named Paul McCartney from Cape Coral says the storm damaged his house, so his family has decided to move north. He says switching his daughter to online learning will help make sure she doesn't fall behind. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do, so them being set up has been real convenient. Um, but to make the decision, it's not been easy all along. Yeah, of course, you know, we've been in our home now seven years and time to move on. Now, students who go to schools that aren't opening soon because they need repairs will automatically be enrolled in a nearby school. They don't have to worry about this. The school district says it will send an updated plan to parents and staff today. It is uh, 709 right now and the boil water notice for all Lee County utility customers has been lifted. Earlier this week, the majority of customers were able to safely use their drinking water, but now the final little pockets that were still on a boil water notice uh, that is safe for you to drink as well. So that's Town and River, North Trail RV Park and Siesta Isles neighborhoods. If you're not on Lee County Utilities, uh, contact your utility provider for information on any boil water notices in your area. Most of them are updating that information on their social media sites as well. Take a look at your screen. This is Lee County Domestic Animal Services. They tell us they are working to reunite animals with their owners. The department is asking people to turn in strays. They say they will be processed and if no owner is found, the rescuer can adopt the animal. Well, this morning, even though this front's weak, it will make an impact on the weekend forecast. There's another front in the seven day that may surprise you a little bit. We're going to talk about that coming up in a few minutes. Just a terrifying, terrible situation to go on a vacation to, you know, to not make it home, to see your kids. Um, and the sad thing is, is her daughter bought her her ticket for her birthday to go a heartbreaking reality, what family and friends are facing after losing loved ones during the hurricane. 
710 is the time right now. If you're heading out the door, here's a look at traffic hotspots. When clients call fair and fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is gonna be an end to this situation that they're currently in. And we're there to help them. Good Friday morning, everybody. At 714, here are some of our other top stories. 99 out of 100 members of European Parliament say Russia should be considered a terrorist regime. Today, they voted to support a resolution that also calls on Russia to withdraw its forces from Ukraine. Turkey did not cast a vote. There's added tension on South Korea's border with the North this morning. South Korea says the North fired another missile and artillery shells today. North Korea, I'm sorry, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff say some of the shells landed inside a buffer zone, which is supposed to be a neutral area between the countries. And today, the University of Michigan will release its monthly consumer sentiment report that measures how people feel about the state of the economy and the expectations they have moving forward. The report is expected to reflect increased concern about inflation. Well, the Florida Medical Examiner's Commission says the number of confirmed deaths from Hurricane Ian now stands at 108 people. Exactly half of those people are in Lee County. Yeah, our evening anchor Nadine Yanis spoke with family and friends of loved ones who lost their lives, including the friend of one woman with her sister and cousin celebrating her 40th birthday on Fort Myers Beach. Another whose uncle didn't survive the storm surge on Matt Lachey, each of them sharing these difficult stories. At 66 years old, Mike Verdream had a dream of living on the water in Matt Lachey. Moving to Southwest Florida in 2021, just three hours down the road from his niece and goddaughter, Stacy, whom he helped raise after her dad died when she was just two weeks old. He's always been just a really big part of my life and just kind of always, sorry, always there for me. Um, you know, when I didn't have a dad to do things Stacy last speaking with her uncle the Wednesday morning Hurricane Ian hit. I woke up and I just felt like I need to give him a call and so I gave him a call on Wednesday morning. I spoke with him for um, three minutes and he was he kind of gave me his plan. He said that he was staying there. If it got too bad, he was going to go to a friend's home that um, was two stories. And if it got really bad, he was had a friend that had a truck and they were going to get out of there. It wasn't until several silent days, missed phone calls and miscommunication from neighbors on Matt Lachey, Stacy and her family got the call from the sheriff. It wasn't until the next day um, when we got some more information and we found out that he was found on Friday, um, September 30th, um, and he was a victim of the storm surge, so he never really made it through the storm. Mike Verdream's picture now honored on a growing memorial here in downtown Fort Myers, now one of the 105 people claimed by Hurricane Ian and counting. But loved ones say 
These are not just numbers. They are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, all lives that need to be remembered. Nichelle Harris Miles was actually on Fort Myers Beach with her sister and two cousins when Ian made landfall. She was here celebrating her 40th birthday, a ticket bought by her daughter, according to close family friend Danette Marshall. It's just a terrifying, terrible situation to go on a vacation and to not make it home to see your kids. Um, and the sad thing is, is her daughter bought her her ticket for her birthday to go. Inside the second story hotel, Nichelle, her sister and cousins tied themselves together with sheets as the storm surge came through. That's when the roof collapsed. Nichelle dying days after turning 40 with her sister witnessing it all. Everybody, you know, they say, why did you go? Why did you go? Why did they go? And they went because they were told by the Airbnb people that, you know, it doesn't get that bad here. And, you know, it's not gonna, it's not calling to come. And when they got there, everything was boarded up and she's not a number or anybody else who lost their life. They're not a number, they're somebody. And they have somebody out there that loves them, that calls them mom, calls them sister, auntie, um, you know, all that. I think the message here in all of this is that, um, people will hear this and see this and you know the people who live in Florida might think twice um, and hopefully evacuate the next time a hurricane is coming our way um, so other family members don't have to go through this and I think too it's so important to like help your neighbor like if your neighbor doesn't have a way out scoop them up on your way when you're evacuating and and take them with you um, I just think by telling this story, if we can save one person's life, um, then that means everything. Well, last night, the Medical Examiner's Commission raised the death toll from 105 to now 108 storm victims. Our Fox 4's Caitlin Knapp spoke with another woman who lost her brother. We continue to honor and remember their lives. That story is coming up this morning at 8. The Naples airport will have regular hours today for the first time since Ian hit. One runway will be open for all flights. Another will have daytime hours. That's because crews still have to repair some lightning damage. The Naples Airport Authority says nearby airports like RSW actually gave them resources to help them get the runways ready to go. All right, right now we're looking live here from our camera. This is on top of our studios in the Cape, and uh, right now we're waking up with just a good mix of sun and clouds, and throughout the day uh, we're going to see that sunshine continue to develop and uh, push our temperatures up into the upper 80s. Now the radar this morning is showing a little bit of activity as we wait for a cold front to slide on through. As we uh, look around town right now, it's fairly quiet. A lot of false return, but you can see some showers moving away on the east coast, uh, but that cold front is yet to move through. It's going to take a day or so here earlier in the week. The computer models were indicating it could be a little stronger, but due to tropical storm car to our south kind of blocking the way uh, this front's going to be slow to move through and it's going to impact our weather eventually by Sunday. As we wait for the front to arrive, we've got a chance of some showers and you can kind of see those back over the Gulf. Now later on today, maybe even a thunderstorm, but it's going to be late. You're looking at seven, eight o'clock for the development of that. Some of those lingering after midnight, not nearly as wet as what we saw yesterday with uh, rainfall totals of only 0.04 out of Pagefield, but some of the areas picked up couple inches. Naples, we are uh, still waiting for that rain gauge to get back up and operating after Hurricane Ian. Our temperatures this morning in the upper 60s right now for Clewis and the rest of us in the low to mid 70s. And you can see the visibility a little limited in some spots. We got some patchy fog with the moisture pooled ahead of that front. We will see those isolated storms late in the day. Your sunset for the last time this year at seven o'clock. Tomorrow, 6.59. We continue to take the minutes off here as the days are getting shorter. Record on this date, 92, not that long ago, back in 2018. That high of 87, it's where we should be this time of year. This front is, again, slowly going to work its way south. There's Tropical Storm Carl. That moisture tail the last couple of days enhanced our rain chance here as that front drifted to the south. Now it's kind of blocking that front due to a weak ridge to the north from moving quickly through the area. We will see a stronger front next Wednesday. So in the meantime, as that front slowly meanders to the south here today, we've got that chance of thunderstorms with the moisture. You can clearly see it back over the Gulf waters. 
They'll linger here through midnight and then watch tomorrow. That northeasterly wind behind the front, but with some moisture still in place, showers and thunderstorms along our coastline. It's not until Sunday where we see some drier air begin to surge in, keeping our rain chances low. For this afternoon, again, it's a later day, 7 8 o'clock. There's midnight, so some showers lingering. And then for Saturday, mostly sunny throughout the day. And then here come those thunderstorms, 6 7 o'clock, rolling along our coastline. So, Carl, still a tropical storm. The winds of 40 miles per hour moving southeast at 6 and eventually making landfall here in Mexico and becoming a remnant low. If you got to be out on the water today, just watch the storm debris. Weather is not going to be your issue until late after sunset there. And your seven day forecast, we talked about that other front. Check this out. By the time we get towards Wednesday, Boom, look at that. Tuesday night to Wednesday, that cold front's a strong one. We're going to wake up in the mid to upper 50s in some spots here on Thursday morning. $2,000 for electrical repairs. We're going to tell you how people can apply for FPL financial assistance coming up. And a 74-year-old man has been living in his destroyed home since the destruction of Ian. How he finally got the help he needed. It's 723. You're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Good Friday morning, everybody. It's 725. We are looking live at Naples Bay. Looks like a beautiful sunrise, a little cloudy over southwest Florida this morning. Those clouds may bring a little bit of rain later this morning going into the afternoon. Trent is tracking it for you. We'll get an update on his forecast in just a minute. If you are a Florida Power and Light customer and you need financial assistance as you're recovering from the storm, you can take advantage of the company's Care to Share program. This is a partnership with local Salvation Army chapters. Customers with FPL, and if you have a lower income, you can get up to $2,000 for electrical repairs, repairs that are needed for crews to safely restore power to your home. If you want to apply for this assistance or if you want to donate to Care to Share, you can visit fpl.com slash help. And power crews will be back on Pine Island today. They'll work to restore power to more of the island. Take a look at your screen. I want to show you some of the work that LCEC crews did here yesterday. 
There is power now on a stretch of Springfellow Road, which includes the fire stations, Town Center and Pine Island Elementary School. LCEC says its focus is on the barrier islands and a few customers in places like Cape Coral and North Fort Myers who still do not have power. Well, Internet service, at least on Pine Island, is a very different story right now. People tell us basically nobody has it. So that's a problem for people who say they can't apply for FEMA help online. Cell phone service on the island is very difficult as well. Some people tell us they're struggling to get a hold of any emergency responders. Three, four days ago, we were having problems. They were having trouble locating people because they couldn't call them back. They couldn't keep people on the line. So a Starlink hotspot is set up on the southern part of the island. People say, though, it doesn't have enough bandwidth, and they're asking for more resources to meet their need. Hey there, Southwest Florida. We are where the shrimp boats used to be here at Fort Myers Beach, and now they are just piled on top of each other. We're hearing from one woman this morning who has been out here almost every single day feeding the families in this area as they remain here on Estero Island, not to mention the needs that they have as we continue our recovery efforts. That and more coming up on Fox 4 Morning News. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Right now, we're looking live here from the Bayfront Inn. This camera has kind of been a max bag the last couple of days. We've seen cloud cover. This morning, we've seen a little sunshine break through as we're waiting for a weak cold front to move through, and it's going to eventually bring some changes as we get closer to the weekend. I'll show you what the radar looks right now. It's kind of messy. We have some showers to our south over the Florida Keys, and as we move back over Southern Collier, we've seen a couple of very light showers rotate through, and otherwise, this is all false return to our north, and you can see some showers here out over the open Gulf waters. Those 
those are uh, going to stay off on the shore. But as a cold front moves through later today, could spark some late day thunderstorms. We're talking 7 8 o'clock and kind of lingering through midnight. That rain chance around 40%. Our temperature is pretty warm. We're in the mid 70s. It's humid outside, so a little bit of fog. Um, you can see along State Road 29, two to four and a half miles between Immokalee and LaBelle. And later on in the day, it's not necessarily here in the next few hours, but boy, 7 8 o'clock, you see those. Uh, couple thunderstorms developing. You see the showers lingering here through midnight. So as you go out hour by hour here early, do expect our temperatures to be in the upper 80s today, 87, which is exactly where we should be on average for this time of year. All right, as power is restored and main roads are cleared of debris, we are seeing communities across southwest Florida opening up for residents to come back home. Good to see. For the first time, people who live near Bonita Beach have unrestricted access. Let's bring in Fox 4's John Barron. He's live there now as people start to return to that area. Yeah, so Chris, you brought up a good point. This is an opportunity for places that are obviously out on the beach and the roadways that you were talking about. They're starting to clear those up. And just like Fort Myers Beach, where they were starting to allow some of those residents on the roadways, well, here at Bonita Beach, they're allowing no restrictions when we talk about those residents coming out on the beach. I spoke with the sheriff's office, and they were telling me that they're having everybody who needs to come out of the beach can do so, and they have no restrictions on that. But there is a curfew from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. every day currently right now for those Bonita Beach residents. Now, I want you guys to take a look right now what we're looking at. You can kind of see this checkpoint. Obviously, everybody's still right here. They're just one of those things that want to make everybody safe. They have, you know, first responders on standby as well. And Verizon actually has that emergency tower right here as well, trying to get some of that, you know, uh, internet back here as well and try to just get some of that uh, cell service back here so people can have something so they can go ahead and make sure they have those phone calls. But really right now, we're just seeing a lot of people filter in, just making their way, just trying to get in and assess the damage for a lot of them this is the first time since hurricane Ian made landfall that they're all getting an opportunity to kind of assess the damage you can see we've got sand on both sides about six feet tall for miles right now as we have just everybody kind of making their way kind of giving you an idea of how much work they're having to do here just trying to make sure everybody gets back to normal but if you want to assess the damage you can take a look right here at Doc's Beach House as you can see they're already in the rebuilding phase right now as you can see it looks like they've got contractors out here and they're already trying to just kind of get the structure back to its meaning. Don't know how long that'll take. Of course, we haven't seen the owner yet this morning, but this is one of the ideas that you can kind of take a look at and see how much damage some of these places had that were beachside, just like here on Doc's Beach House. But you can already see the rebuilding phase well underway, and that's exactly what a lot of these residents are going to be doing as well, as we are actually going to be able to kind of make our way out there a little bit later on, actually, this morning. We're actually going to go out there for the first time this morning as well. Well, but we were actually told at 7 o'clock they were allowing some of those residents back on, of course, because of that curfew. They weren't letting anybody on at that point in time. But once again, no restrictions right here at Bonita Beach, and we'll have more for you guys coming up in the next hour. For now, live at, here at Bonita Beach, John Barron, Fox 4. All right, let's show you some new video. This is from the Mount Lachey Pine Island Fire Control District. The agency posted some drone video. This shows Flamingo Bay. They say it's one of the hardest hit areas there uh, in Pine Island, and they say this video they hope will show community members who so far haven't been able to get back to their homes and are wondering what it looks like, a little idea of what they're going to be dealing with. A 74 year old man who lives in a storm damaged home in Mount Lachey says he has hope again this morning. Amy brought you his story earlier this week, and we were there yesterday when some volunteers with the Firefighters Association spent the day clearing out his furniture and ripping out his drywall. Johnny Glisson's home took a lot of damage and water in the storm, but he kept living there. When we first met him, he said he was having a hard time reaching FEMA for help, and he couldn't clean the house himself. I didn't think I was going to be able to get through this. I kept saying, I am, I am. But then in my heart, I just start saying, Johnny, it's too much. The Firefighters Association has been working nonstop to help people like Johnny. Their next mission is to fi fix roofs for other firefighters who need help in Port Charlotte. Love to see it. Well, every day since the storm hit, we've seen countless examples of kindness, just like that with Johnny. Yeah. This morning, we want to introduce you to a woman who's helping her community one meal at a time. Fox Source Lauren Petrelli is live on Fort Myers Beach, where the woman will start giving out food a little later this morning. 
Yeah, Chris and Amy, Rhonda Burant has been out here almost every single day. She says that she feels so connected to this community and that's been driving her need to really just help anyone who needs it here on Estero Island. A lot of the people that she's been helping are people who used to work on these shrimp boats. This is my first time over here at this part of the marina and these boats are piled on top of each other. Uh, you could see these two right here. They're absolutely not where they should be, but the storm just so powerful, kind of moving them like toy boats. A lot of the people who used to work on these boats, some of them trying to crawl into them at night so that way they can stay on the boats. That's what Renda has told me. Others are living in tents. Renda has been out here rain or shine almost every single day since the storm happened, trying to make sure that they are well fed and taken care of. Now she sent me video. I don't know if we have it of it pouring rain on them tarps over them still trying to cook over a grill, but you can see right here that standing water. That is what is left of all of the heavy downpours that we have had over the past several days because each and every evening we've had that typical rainy season pattern sweep through this area, just adding more devastation to an area that doesn't need it anymore. Crews were here just a couple minutes ago. They are piecing together uh, some of the debris and carrying it away. I'm not sure if we scared them away. We were waiting for the tea, so I didn't have a chance to stop them and ask them, uh, you know, how long they were going to be here, how long they think the recovery is going to be. I hope they come back so that way I can and ask them as people here start to piece together their lives. Renda also told me she's very worried about the people who used to work on these boats. That's because they're out of work right now. They have no running water, no electricity over here. So we made some calls to FEMA to see if they qualify, what they need to do to get in contact with FEMA, because right now we haven't seen any workers out here. We're going to hear from them later on this morning. We're also going to hear from Renda, and you're going to see her cooking for all of these people. We're going to hear their stories from the storm as well. If you are maybe someone who is a business owner, a contractor, or even just a resident at Fort Myers Beach, and you want to get here today, Renda texted me and told me that she's running a little late because headed over the bridge, the traffic, again, it's very congested right there. So she's stuck. So we're going to hear from her coming up on Fox 4 Morning News. But I just also wanted to warn anyone out there in case they were headed this way. In Fort Myers Beach, Lauren Petrelli, Fox 4. All right, Lauren, I want to talk a little bit more about the commercial fishing industry in southwest Florida because it has some new challenges to deal with because of Ian. The storm surge took out most of the shrimping industry where Lauren is on Fort Myers Beach. This is an overhead view of what it looks like where she is right now. Of the 50 boats in port during Ian, only two can be used for fishing right now. On Pine Island, four of the five fish houses were destroyed and all of the commercial docks around them are gone and the grouper boats were severely damaged as well. The owner of Island Seafood Market on Matt Lachey says the area's identity is in jeopardy. The fishing industry and commercial industries in this area, we're going to lose the founding of what founded this area. I mean, our commercial fishermen on Pine Island, especially when the original infrastructure on this island was set to get catch from fishermen to market. So, I mean, the culture, the history of what made this area unique in the first place is, is gone or going to be gone, and I don't want to see that happen. He and other fishermen hope the state and federal government will help them by declaring a fishery disaster order. The FWC Division of Marine Fisheries said this in an email to Fox 4. FWC has already been in contact with our partners in the industry and are coordinating the next steps. As soon as a rapid assessment is conducted, we anticipate that the state will be requesting federal fisheries disaster declaration from the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. FWC has a hotline to report boats and other vessels that were set loose during the hurricane. The storm surge, of course, sent thousands of boats out to sea, and it pushed some to shore, like Lauren just showed us. Those shrimp boats just piled up there along the bay in Fort Myers Beach. Uh, some damaged marinas. The phone number that you need to call if you see a boat or you need to report a boat uh, is on your screen here. It's that 850-488-5600. You can call Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. You will need to give Fish and Wildlife information like the registration number if you have it, the location, and a description of that boat. The harbor master for Fort Myers Beach was in a video on Twitter warning people about what's in the harbor in the Matanzas Bay mooring field. His name is Austin Gilchrist and he said the mooring field is closed for now. The no wake zones are in place even if you don't see the buoys and the signs up.
Gilchrist said to watch out for debris from the damaged docks, and he said there aren't many places to dock a boat right now, so please, if you are heading out by boat, just be careful. Well, not even the storm can stop them. The Lehigh Acres team hitting the field regardless of the circumstances. It's coming up on Fox 4 Morning News. Seven forty-four right now. Let's get a look at some of the top stories we're following today. Police in North Carolina will release more information about a shooting that killed five people, including an off-duty police officer. It took police several hours to arrest the suspect, who they only described as a juvenile male. We're told that two others were wounded. Former President Trump says he'll respond to the January 6th committee today. The House committee investigating last year's January 6th riots at the Capitol voted unanimously to subpoena the former president. One committee member said we must seek the testimony under oath of January 6th central player. The former president responded on his social media platform, calling the committee, quote, a bust. Lee County Schools unveiling the plan for resuming classes. They start on Monday for 13 schools that are opening back up. An additional 15 will reopen on Tuesday. The majority of the buildings, though, remain closed with air quality tests ongoing. If you want to see a list of which schools are opening on which day and which ones remain closed for that matter, you can go to fox4now.com. A first responder who has damaged homes from Hurricane Ian will receive money from the state. This is to help them recover. Governor Ron DeSantis said that $2 million from the Florida Disaster Fund will go specifically to our first responders that are affected. Well, it's a lot easier said than done, but right now a lot of us are trying to get back to some sense of normalcy. We're trying, that's for sure. Fox 4's Yvette Sanchez hit the field with a Lehigh Acres Pop Warner team who decided the storm's aftermath was not going to keep them from practicing. We have all five of our teams in playoffs this season. After Hurricane Ian, parents were eager to know where were their kids going to practice. 
when we're going to continue our season, when we're going to continue our practice and our games. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, you could find parents in these exact stands yelling and cheering on their kids who play or cheer for the Lehigh Raiders. But after Hurricane Ian, no one is allowed on the field. After Jacob Kennedy, athletic director of the Pop Warner team, put his feelers out, Pastor Nick Yantorn at Rice Christian Church received a text message. We can definitely offer up what we have, and uh, it's been awesome that we could do this for our community. With over 250 kids, Pastor Nick knew his fields weren't the best, but he gave them a practice field and gridiron regardless. I thought it was just even more incredible than being able to help one single team with one group of cheerleaders. With playoffs next week. Huge help to our organization for Nick to come in and, and allow us to use the field is a huge help. Kennedy says this is more than just a practice for the Raiders. We're here for the kids mainly and getting them back out here to practice was huge. It gets them into a routine and it helps the parents get some time to kind of gather their thoughts while we have their kids out here playing football and cheer. In Lehigh, Yvette Sanchez, Fox 4. This morning, the Naples Zoo will open for the first time since Ian. The zoo said it had some flooding because of storm surge as well as some wind damage, but they say all the animals are safe and they cleaned up the debris so they can open up again. Take a look at your screen. We have the address for the zoo and the phone number you can call if you'd like to help out and maybe donate to help the zoo recover. The zoo will open in just a little bit at 9 this morning. A couple of organizations will get together today to give out something we keep hearing people need, shoes and socks. Yeah, even when I was in the field, I saw them scattered all over mm. communities. You can understand why people need them. The Cajun Navy, the charity Samaritan's Feet will be in Fort Myers. They're giving out 10,000 pairs of new shoes and 28,000 pairs of socks. They will also have shirts, backpacks, hats, purses, and other clothing. This will happen today from 9 to 5 at Broadway Community Church in Fort Myers. That's on Broadway Circle. Right now, we're looking live here from our tower cam on top of the studios at Fox 4, and you got a mixed bag. you got some cloud cover around and possibility of a few showers here throughout the day. We're waiting on a weak cold front to continue to slide through the south as it does so. Eventually, by Sunday, we'll get the really dry weather and moving in. This front kind of losing a little steam as it moves across the state, getting blocked to the south by some moisture that's associated with Tropical Storm Carl over the Bay of Campeche. That's all false return. Or along I-4. Let's move to southwest Florida where you see a few light showers, very, very light showers between Marco and the Gulf of Mexico and a few more as sitting miles offshore of Sanibel and Captiva. We need a little time to dry out. We've seen enough rain, uh, but fortunately there's enough moisture in place that we could add to that late today. We'll have the morning and afternoon to get out there and continue our recovery efforts. Officially yesterday of Page Field, only .04. I know a lot of you saw much heavier rain. We're waiting for that rain gauge to come back online in Naples after the storm. Current temperatures. We've got a 69 reading there in Cluison, the coolest one on the map. Elsewhere, we're in the mid 60s or 70s, I should say, along the Calusa Hatchie. And with the moisture in place, visibility a little limited this morning. You see it down to a mile or two here between LaBelle and the Cape. And that humidity is a sign that we'll see more isolated to scattered thunderstorms late in the day. Our sunset, 7 o'clock. It's the last sunset, 7 o'clock or later for the year. Tomorrow, 659. Four Myers average this time of year is 87. That's exactly where we will be as we've got a cold front that's slowly moving down the state. But that moisture tail we've been talking about with Tropical Storm Carl is continuing to block this front a bit. This area high pressure to the north, not strong enough to push it all out. And so what we'll see here for today, watch the timeline here by 8 o'clock. Showers and a few thunderstorms between Highlands, Glades, and Hendry County. And then that front moves to the south. But there's enough moisture lingering here that as we get a northeasterly flow, we'll see showers and thunderstorms back along our coastline and then for Sunday uh, we finally see that drier air return. Let me walk you through today. Again, we're going to stop this late 7 8 o'clock. Those showers are going to linger here through midnight, so some overnight rain not out of the question. And then tomorrow with that northeasterly breeze, you see the 40% chance again late afternoon and early evening hours. Sunday much, much better here as that drier air begins to rotate through. But talking about Carl here, it's not going to be an issue for the U.S. It's going to continue to move off to the south and the Bay of Campeche and eventually 
make landfall in Mexico and become a remnant low. In marine forecast here today, I know the water's still a little dangerous, but if you're out there as one of the first responders or helping in the uh, aid, just know that the storm debris is still an issue. Weather-wise, it won't be until later that we'll see those showers and storms. Let's get you to the seven-day forecast. This front's a little weaker, but look at that. Wednesday, 76. Overnight into Thursday, mid to upper 50s as we get a nice taste of fall. Temperatures well below average for the later parts of the week. Time is 751. We'll be right back after this quick break. All right, 751. Let's get a quick check of your traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them. At 754, I want to show you a live picture from Naples. This is the Naples Bay and the clouds kind of getting in front of a sunrise here in southwest Florida. It may be kind of a cloudy morning. Trent says some parts of our area will see some rain. It's not going to be widespread and we'll get a look at his forecast to see how much longer the threat is going to last into the afternoon. Hurricane Ian and some medical issues are keeping a Southwest Florida woman from what she loves to do around the holidays, a project she works on where she sends stockings to troops overseas. Fox 4's Brianna Brownlee shows us how her friends are stepping in to carry on her mission. Just how much she's loved. A tearful reminder from Kay's quilt shop owner, Kay Harper, addressed to Marsha Wakuviak, who Kay calls her fabric fairy. Kay's dear friend Marsha lost everything because of Hurricane Ian. This is cute. I like that. The two made many art pieces together, and for the past five years, during the holiday season, Marsha pushed to master the art of giving back by sending holiday cheer to United States troops. She generally makes a thousand stockings for the troops. However, this holiday season, Marsha can't complete this task. She lost everything in Hurricane Ian including her sewing machine, and she is currently hospitalized. Um, not as a result of the hurricane, 
but other medical issues. Marsha's dear friend Kay and around 25 soldiers in fabric banded together to carry out Marsha's holiday mission. Some that we have that are already completed and they're just so pretty and nice. With less than a week to complete the stockings, the group has about 50 completed with a goal of finishing around 250 by the end of Thursday. And for the troop who receives this stocking, here's what Kay wants you to remember. I guess even when things are bad, they're not that bad. Mm. Well, just ahead on Fox 4 Morning News at 8, residents are making their way home, some of them for the first time since Hurricane Ian hit. So we'll take you live to the area around Bonita Beach, which is now open as that community starts to rebuild.
It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do. Moving on because of Ian, this morning, where you can go to get your children into a new school if the storm has forced you to move. And the restrictions have been lifted here at Bonita Beach, and now residents are getting the opportunity to start assessing the damage that Hurricane Ian left behind. A sense of relief and recovery this morning, as for some, the power is coming back on. Crews are back at work on Pine Island to restore even more of it today. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. And good morning. Thanks for joining us for Fox 4 Morning News at 8 today. I'm Amy Wegman. I'm Chris Shaw. We have a full morning of Ian recovery for you today from roads to schools to airports. There are several new reopenings we want to tell you about. Yeah, we also want to take you into communities here in Southwest Florida. So many still need help. So many people are still in the cleanup process, even more than two weeks after this storm made landfall. But yesterday was a tough day because we had a lot of rain. Right. So let's go check in with certified meteorologist Trent Eric to see if more rain is on the radar today. How are things looking, Trent? I, pretty dry here early, but we've got enough moisture around that today we'll see a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain. I think most of that is going to occur late. We're talking 7 to 8 o'clock. Uh, a few drizzles not out of the question here early. Most of the heavy rain has been down in the Florida Keys, but you can see some of the really light stuff there south of Cape Romano and some showers sitting out over the Gulf. This is all false return. You're seeing pop in and out of the radar there between our Arcadia and the lake. Speaking of Arcadia, you're at 71 degrees, mid to upper 70s as you work your way south. And with that moisture in place, we got some fog. Check out these numbers. Visibility down to a mile or less here between Northport and LaBelle. And as we go throughout the day, the fog will mix out. And you can see we're pretty dry here through lunchtime. 7, 8 o'clock, that's when we see the scattered showers and thunderstorms. And some of that will linger here through midnight. Your hour by hour forecast shows those temperatures climbing up into the upper 80s. 87, that's exactly where we should be for this time of year. Year. Well, as power is restored and main roads are cleared, we are seeing some communities across Southwest Florida opening up for people uh, to go back home for the first time. Yeah, for the first time, people who live in the area around Bonita Beach have unrestricted access to get back home. Fox Source John Barron is there live now as people start to return. Yeah, so Chris, so we were allowed on the Bonita Beach at about 7 a.m. And that's when they started to really see some of those residents start to filter in and actually in kind of see they're coming in waves all this morning. And that's really what we're seeing. The reason why they're allowing everybody on is because Bonita Beach actually still has a curfew from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. But they have no restrictions as far as anybody that wants to come out here. And obviously it's all residents that are all coming out here just trying to assess the damage. You can see as really uh, you can see the sheriff's departments are actually patrolling quite a bit and how much sand we have is honestly about six feet high on both sides and it goes for miles down here on Hickory Boulevard and that's where we're standing at this point in time and as you can actually see just really the sand is really taking over some of these roadways. We're still seeing bulldozers kind of trying to clean up the roads as they go along but as you can see the beach has really taken over most of this area and all these front yards have now turned into sandboxes because of how much we're seeing out here in Bonita Springs. But we're going to turn the camera back over this way. If I can get Travis to bring it back over and kind of see a lot of the damage that we're still seeing. We've got an Audi over here that's sitting right now and it's about in a little bit of water, but it's really been dinged up a good little bit, especially on that passenger side. And actually, you can just see all the damage that we're all kind of seeing. Just a lot of this actually being from the first floor. And that's what a lot of these housings are really seeing, especially the ones over here that are on the beach side. They're about three to four stories tall, but really the first and second floors are the ones that got damaged a good bit. Bit. And that's what we're all seeing out here is a lot of these contractors are still making their ways out here and actually already starting to try to rebuild some of the foundations that we're seeing out here with a lot of these neighbors. And actually, we're going to get the chance to speak with some of those neighbors. We've seen them all coming out here, but a lot of them have just trying to really just get this damage all cleaned up and really start to take a look at how much is being left from Hurricane Ian. We'll be black. Actually, we'll be back here in about another hour for you guys uh, here in Bonita Springs. But we'll send it back to you guys right now in the studio for now here live in Benita Springs, John Barron, Fox 4. John, thank you very much. More things going on today. The Lee County School District will do air quality tests on 38 schools with the hope that they'll be able to reopen next week. Right. The plan right now is to open Lee County schools in phases. So the superintendent, Dr. Christopher Bernier, made the announcement yesterday. He says some schools will be opening on Monday, some on Tuesday, some on Wednesday. He says the Lee County School District will find temporary buildings for the schools that have the worst damage. So here's a look at the plan uh, for next week. On Monday, 11 elementary schools, two middle schools are back in class. Then on Tuesday, 10 elementary schools, one middle, two Title I schools and two high schools reopen. 
The two high schools are Cypress Lake in Fort Myers and Ida Baker in Cape Coral. Uh, if you want to find a complete list of the openings that are happening Monday and Tuesday, when your kids will go back and the schools that are closed for now, uh, you can do that on our website. Fox4Now.com. If you're asking why your child's school is not on the list at all, Lee County Schools put together a video detailing what it calls the nine safety criteria that a building has to meet before the kids can go back. So you can see that information when you go to the Lee County School District website. It's leeschools.net. And families who had to relocate because of the storm can send their children to a school that's closer to where they live now. This morning, the school district has five locations open to make it easier for those parents to go in and re-enroll their children. Those sites are in Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Lehigh Acres, and Bonita Springs. You can see them right on your screen. You can also find this information on our website. Go to fox4now.com. These sites are open from 9 and they will stay open till 430 or until the last person in line has been helped. And we spoke to one family who chose to switch to online learning because of all of this. A man named Paul McCartney who lives in Cape Coral says the storm damaged his house, so his family is moving north. He says switching his daughter to online learning will help make sure she doesn't fall behind. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do, so them being set up has been real convenient. Um, but to make the decision, it's not been easy all along. Yeah, of course, yeah, we've been in our home now seven years, and time to move on. Now, there's another group of students who go to schools that were so badly damaged, repairs are going to take a long time. Those students will automatically be enrolled in a nearby school, and they do not need to re-enroll. Well, the boil water notice for all of Lee County utility customers has been lifted. Earlier this week, the majority of customers were able to safely use their drinking water. Now, the final remaining areas that were still on a boil water notice have been listed, lifted. Excuse me. So that's Town and River, North Trail RV, and Siesta Isles neighborhoods. Uh, if you are not on Lee County utilities, so if that's not who you pay your water bill to, you can contact your utility provider for information on their boil water notices in your area. Most of them have been lifted. There are still a few little pockets left. Uh, they are typically sharing that information on their social media sites as well. Well, Cape Coral City leaders, they want your help to expedite the cleanup process. When you put debris out on the roadway, Make sure not to block utility boxes or lift stations. The city says by avoiding those areas, this will prevent further damage to the boxes and any stations, and it will speed up repairs that need to be made. The city says it has several claw trucks going around. They're picking up those big piles of debris, not just yard waste, but also uh, hurricane destruction and debris from homes. It will, of course, take a while to clear all of it up. And power crews will be back on Pine Island today. They will work to restore power to more of the island. Take a look at your screen. I want to show you some video of the work LCEC crews did yesterday. There's power now on a stretch of Stringfellow Road, which includes the fire stations, town center, and Pine Island Elementary School. LCEC says its focus is on the barrier islands and a few customers in places like Cape Coral and North Fort Myers who still don't have power. Internet service, at least on Pine Island, is a different story right now. People tell us almost nobody has it, and that's a problem for people who say they can't apply for FEMA help. Some people tell us they are struggling to get a hold of emergency responders as well. Three, four days ago, we were having problems. They were having trouble locating people because they couldn't call them back. They couldn't keep people on the line. Now, a Starlink hotspot is set up in the southern part of the island, but some people there say it doesn't have enough bandwidth, and they're asking for more resources to meet the need. The Naples airport is reopening today for the first time since Hurricane Ian hit southwest Florida. Not all of the runways will be open, though. Crews are still working on repairing some lighting that was damaged during the storm. The Naples Airport Authority says other nearby nearby airports, excuse me, like Southwest Florida International, they helped with resources to help most of their runways get up and running again. First responders who have storm damage will get millions of dollars to help clean up their homes. Governor Ron DeSantis made that announcement here in Punta Gorda yesterday. The money will come from the Florida Disaster Fund. It has raised more than $45 million so far, and $2 million of that will go to those first responders. Florida Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed sent a letter asking for federal help for farmers. You see, she wants a USDA secretarial disaster designation for farms in 17 counties. They include Lee, Collier, Charlotte, DeSoto, 
Hendry and Sarasota counties. Freed says preliminary damage assessments show farms in those areas do meet the requirements to get that federal help. Well, the election is now less than four weeks away. Governor Ron DeSantis is expanding voting access in counties that were devastated by Hurricane Ian, so all of southwest Florida. The governor's executive order expands the number of days and locations where you can go for early voting. It also allows people to call the supervisor of elections office and request a mail-in ballot over the phone instead of just that signature requirement. Jenya Coulter is the senior elections analyst for a nonpartisan group called OSET. She used to work in Polk County uh, in the elections office and she helped to run elections after hurricanes. And she's urging voters here in Southwest Florida to take advantage of this ad additional early voting time. It also frees things up for election offices because Early voting locations almost always have the best trained poll workers. They may not have a huge staff, but they've got a very experienced staff. All right, so uh, if you want to take advantage of early voting, you can do that. The order also waives training requirements for the poll workers that are working there. Right now, you see the radar sweeping around. Kind of dirty this morning. Got some showers to the south, showers to the east. We'll let you know the timing of some additional rainfall that's possible this afternoon coming up after the break. A 74-year-old man has been living in his destroyed home since Ian rolled through. This morning, we'll tell you how he finally got the help he needed. And 8:11 is the time right now. Let's get a look at traffic hotspots. When clients call fair and fair. They're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in. And we're there to help them. It's 8.15 on this Friday morning. Here's a look at some of our other top stories. 99 out of 100 members of European Parliament say Russia should be considered a terrorist regime. Today, they voted to support a resolution that also calls on Russia to withdraw its forces from Ukraine. Turkey did not cast a vote. There is added tension along South Korea's border with the North this morning. South Korea says the North fired another missile and artillery shells today. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff say some of the shells landed inside a buffer zone, which is supposed to be a neutral area between the countries. Today, the University of Michigan will release its monthly consumer sentiment report. That measures how people feel about the state of the economy and the expectations they have moving forward. The report is expected to reflect increased concern about inflation. 816 right now, it's a situation a lot of people are finding themselves in after Hurricane Ian. They have no home, they have no car, and they have nowhere to go. Yeah, but there are emergency shelters all over southwest Florida to give people a roof and four walls. And one of the largest ones is the American Red Cross shelter at Hertz Arena. Yeah, Fox 4's Calvin Lewis spoke with some of the people who are staying at the shelter to get their perspective on what it's been like so far. There's a lot of people that are stranded here that have absolutely nothing and no way. Inside Hertz Arena, you'll find survivors of Hurricane Ian with all sorts of backgrounds, like Roland Flores, a veteran who was previously at another shelter. 
I'm hoping not to be here for more than an, another week. And uh, I guess the VA is trying to, you know, get things worked out. They're putting some of us vets up in a, a hotel or something. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. At least I'll be someplace where it's safe. It's been two weeks since Hurricane Ian made landfall, and survivors are still trying to figure out how they are going to recover. But with each passing day and every hour, tensions are getting higher. It's like no one cares, but they, but they act like they do. Charles Terrell is another one of those who sought refuge at the arena. Me, I'm not a homeless, but half these people that came here, they were homeless before they got here. And then you, and then you do have genuine people that lost their homes and this and that. People like Brittany Allen, a wife and mother to seven children. We're, we sleep on an ice rink, so <laughs> to try to get off the ice would be amazing. While resources have been provided, like hot meals, running water, and electricity, she says conditions have progressively worsened over time. It is completely packed. There are still those sleeping on the floor. Um, you know, there are still those sleeping up in the stands. Um, a lot more people are sick, a lot more cough. The elderly are, you know, they actually took three people to the hospital while we were here due to dehydration. And at the same time, efforts are being made to help those survivors find their footing post shelter. We also have now our caseworkers that are coming in and these caseworkers are assigned to the individuals and will help them find a transition plan. So once they move on from the shelter, they know exactly what's going to happen. In the meantime, these survivors will keep taking it day by day. But still, we keep fighting, we keep plugging on, you know, we're going to get it done one way or another. But that's because that's who we are, you know. In Lee County, Calvin Lewis, Fox 4. And the Red Cross says that they will keep Hertz Arena as a shelter for as long as they need to. Right now, they say they have about 400 people currently staying there, uh, but they do have the capacity to hold about 1,000 people. Well, Hope is back this morning for a 74-year-old man living in his devastated, flooded home on Mount Lachey. So I first introduced you to Johnny earlier this week, and he told us he didn't know where to turn. He needed help, and uh, he needed help clearing out his home and dealing with drywall that needed to be ripped out. He was trying to get a hold of FEMA. He hadn't heard back from them yet. Well, the Florida State Firefighters Association stepped in, and they spent all day with him yesterday cleaning out his home, uh, ripping out drywall, bringing things to the curb that are not salvageable. And the, he's just so happy that he has this help because, again, he felt homeless. He hasn't heard back from FEMA. And remember, he doesn't have homeowner's insurance. Uh, so let's just take a listen to what Johnny thinks of the help that he's getting. I didn't think I was going to be able to get through this. I kept saying, I am, I am. But then in my heart, I just start saying, Johnny, It's too much. Well, the Firefighters Association has been working nonstop to help people just like Johnny. Their next mission is to fix some roofs for other firefighters who need help in Charlotte County. The commercial fishing industry here in southwest Florida has some new challenges to deal with because of Ian. The storm surge took out most of the shipping industry along Fort Myers Beach. Listen to this as you see these incredible pictures. Fort Myers Beach of the 50 boats in port during Ian, only two can be used for fishing right now. On Pine Island, four of the five fish houses were destroyed. All of the commercial docks around them are gone and the grouper boats were severely damaged. The owner of Island Seafood Market on Matt Lachey says the area's identity is now in jeopardy. Fishing industry or commercial industries in this area, we're going to lose the founding of what founded this area. I mean, our commercial fishermen on Pine Island, especially when the original infrastructure on this island was set to get catch from fishermen to market. So, I mean, the culture, the history of what made this area unique in the first place is, is gone or going to be gone, and I don't want to see that happen. So that's why he and other fishermen hope the state and federal government will help them by declaring a fishery disaster order. The FWC Division of Marine Fisheries said this in an email to Fox 4. FWC has already been in contact with our partners in the industry and are coordinating the next steps. As soon as a rapid assessment is conducted, we anticipate that the state will be requesting federal fisheries disaster declarations from the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. 
Well, the harbor master on Fort Myers Beach posted a video on Twitter. He wants to warn people about the hazards that are in Matanzas Bass, Matanzas Bay, excuse me, in the mooring field. Uh, his name is Austin Gilchrist. He said the mooring field is closed for now. The no wake zones are still in place, even though you probably don't see the signs up and the buoys up. Gilchrist said the watch uh, for debris from the damaged docks. In fact, he said there aren't many places to dock a boat right now, so it's best to just stay out of the area. As we've seen, there's a lot of boats out there right now, too, and FWC has a hotline to report boats and other vessels that were set loose during the hurricane. The storm surge sent thousands of them out to sea, and it pushed some to shore, and it damaged others in marinas. So the phone number to call is on your screen. You can do that Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. You will need to give FWC some information like the registration number if you have it and the exact location and a description of the boat. Right now at 822, we're looking live from the Bayfront Inn and throughout the week we've kind of had a mixed bag here. We had several cloudy days. Now this morning we're seeing some clouds as well as we're waiting for a front to move through a week one, a little weaker than what was initially thought earlier before the uh, middle parts of the week. This front's going to stall a little bit and slowly move through our area but it's being blocked by moisture that's associated with Tropical Storm Carl. We'll talk about it in just a moment. Uh, you can see the uh, messy situation here on the radar. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms off the east coast. So you see Naples, Cape Romano, and Marco Island. A few light showers there, Everglades City, and it's kind of the same idea. Most of the false return here has kind of fizzled out. You still see it kind of speckling in and out of the radar there. Uh, but throughout the day, maybe an isolated shower early. I think most of the rain comes here later between 7 and 9. You see the rainfall yesterday. I know several of you uh, picked up more rainfall than this. The Naples rain gauge is still out of commission after the storm. Fort Myers officially 0.04 at the climate sensor there, Page Field. Our temperatures are at 70 for Arcadia, Northport, mid 70s here along the Caloosahatchee, and we're still dealing with some patchy fog, especially in the northern part of the viewing area, and that's because that moisture is pooled out ahead of a cold front. Now, later on today, some isolated showers and storms. Sunset at 7 o'clock. It's our last sunset that's 7 o'clock or later for the year. As far as our average 87, that's exactly what we got forecast here for today as this cold front is getting pushed from an area of high pressure, but it's also being blocked. There's Tropical Storm Carl. In the last couple of days, we were watching the northern extent of that moisture building in here to southwest Florida. Now that front's kind of hitting it and slowing down a bit. So here's what it looks like in your forecast. We'll see an isolated chance of showers and thunderstorms, but look at the timeline. 8 o'clock, we see them develop. They're going to linger around midnight, and then for Saturday, we'll see them slide across once again as it takes uh, a couple days here for that drier air to arrive and that will happen here on Sunday as we'll see mostly sunny and dry conditions. So let's walk you through a little closer up. Look at it. Here's eight. Here's midnight. You see those showers kind of lingering tomorrow. Good mix of sun and clouds, but then we see those thunderstorms roll through and kind of linger through 9 10. And then here comes the drier uh, air on Sunday, giving us a dry end to the weekend. So we've been talking about Carl. Uh, this one's been moving to the southeast here in the Bay of Campeche, long way away from southwest Florida, but that moisture has just been pulled in the last couple of days. This one will quickly become a remnant low as we head towards the weekend. Chris was just telling you about all the boats and the dangers there in the Mantazas Bay. Uh, as far as what we got today, you got to watch for that storm debris. Wind wise, not an issue. It'll be northeast 5 to 10. As far as that seven day forecast, I know this front wasn't quite as strong as we hope, but it will bring some drier air. That one's strong. Check out Wednesday, Thursday. Temperatures in the 70s, overnight lows in the mid to upper 50s.
827 is the time right now. Laund laundry detergent company Tide has set a couple places up where people can wash their clothes. Tide has trucks on the Walmart on McCall Road in Inglewood and in North Fort Myers at the Walmart on Pine Island Road. Now this is free for anyone who doesn't have a way to wash their clothes right now. The trucks will be open in about a half hour and will go until 5 this evening. Chin of Price Boulevard is now open after being washed out by Hurricane Ian. I'll tell you all about the road repairs happening in Northport. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Right now, beautiful sunrise happened in Southwest Florida this morning. We're looking eastbound from the Bayfront camera. It's one of our two that are still operational and up and running since Hurricane Ian. And uh, you can see a little low lying cloud deck. We've been dealing with some fog, especially in the northern part of our viewing area. Uh, but the radar has really been the story the last couple of days. We saw those powerful afternoon showers and thunderstorms there on Wednesday and yesterday kind of on and off throughout the day. Now this morning there is some light. There are some uh, light showers, I should say, over the southeastern parts of the Gulf. A little heavier rain in the Florida Keys and off towards the East Coast. As we look to southern Collier County, you see a couple of those light showers moving through, but most of us are dry. That's all false return. There are a few real showers out over the open water, but our temperatures are running above our average of 71 from the Caloosahatchee South. We had a reading of 69 in Caloosan here this morning, and you can see that visibility uh, a little limited as you work your way off to the north, that moisture pooling ahead of a cold front. And as we play out today's forecast, uh, by the time we get towards 7, 8 o'clock, we'll start to see a couple of showers and thunderstorms develop, and these are going to linger through the overnight hours here. And then tomorrow, it's going to be later in the day where we see that northeasterly breeze push some showers and thunderstorms by Sunday, promise you there's some dry air on the way. Hour by hour here, mix of sun and clouds, eventually up to 87 today.
New from overnight, Fort Myers firefighters worked to save several pets from a house fire. Yeah, it happened early this morning on Sunset Road. It's just south of Lee Memorial Hospital off Cleveland Avenue. And the fire chief says it was an electrical fire that started in the attic. The woman who lives in the home was taken to the hospital. The fire chief says she should be okay. She's being treated for smoke inhalation because she kept going into the house while it was burning to try and save her animals. Several of her animals died from the smoke, but firefighters say they were able to save a number of ferrets, a dog, and a cat. You know, in the last two weeks since Ian, we have seen so many images of destruction. So we want to point out every time we see a sign of recovery, and we're seeing just that in Northport. A big road is opening today. Yeah, it's Price Boulevard, and it was pretty damaged from Hurricane Ian, but now we are starting to see the traffic flow once again. That's where Fox Force Alexandra Ronhell is live right now uh, with an update. Good morning, Alex. Price Boulevard was washed out by Hurricane Ian. It was underwater causing a lot of damage and erosion, but now you can see this section of the road is now fixed. But over here on this side of Price Boulevard, we still have a section that is really damaged. We actually have work crews that are working on repairs right now, and this section of the road is close to traffic. We have seen cars navigating around this road closure. Also, a few people walking through to get to a bus stop that's at the end of the road. So people are relying on the boulevard to be completely finished. The city says this section could take up to a week to fix. We have images of the flooding. The residents of Northport experience homes near Price Boulevard and throughout the city were heavily flooded with water reaching several feet in their homes. The city says some areas saw water levels of 8 to 10 feet. By far the most they've seen. It took several days for the water to recede. Following cleanup efforts, they got started on this road. Now, the city says they're still working to fix the remaining sections. Price Boulevard toward Sumter Boulevard. The city is asking people to drive with caution as construction and repairs are ongoing. And we'll keep you updated for when the rest of Price Boulevard will be completed. Reporting in Northport, Alexandra Rangel. Well, a sense of urgency was felt by a volunteer organization in Harlem Heights in Fort Myers. They're working to restore many of the homes destroyed by Hurricane Ian. Our Colton Chavez was out with some of those volunteers from Crisis Relief and Recovery. This morning, he's showing us why a helping hand really does make a difference for so many of these families. It's kind of scare. Five-year-old Martha, translating for her grandma who only speaks Spanish, says she was with her family when floodwaters rushed into their home in Harlem Heights. The water was here and we were sleeping where the football. Sleeping on higher ground, Martha tells me, overnight across the street at the Kelly Road soccer complex as their entire neighborhood was underwater. Two weeks later and the floodwaters were gone and organizations like Crisis Relief and Recovery are helping Martha and her family remove everything that was lost. What we try to do first is identify the most vulnerable populations that have had the greatest need and been hit the hardest. Member Ethan Wendell says there's no denying the community of Harlem Heights was hit hard leaving more families needing help than Ethan has volunteers to cover. The urgency is that mold is spreading, actively spreading, and we're in the position right now where if we don't get some stuff done, we're going to turn into a health crisis. Ethan says CRR handles everything from roofs to indoor restoration, but what they need most is helping hands. These crews are, are muck and gut crews. They're, they're bringing stuff out of the house. These are things that almost anybody can do. It's not highly technical contractor work. But it's work that, if not completed soon, could be made worse by the return of afternoon storms. But now that these rains have started back up, every day is another, it's like another disaster because they clean up stuff in the house, then their roof leaks again. So if you're looking to get involved and you want to volunteer, it's easy. All you have to do is come right here to the Harlem Heights Community Center where groups are meeting at both 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day. Every day we'll be starting teams to, to, to partner with our leaders, with other organizations to get this community restored as quickly as possible. In Harlem Heights, Colton Chavez, Fox 4. Love to see that. Well, kindness really has been shown all across Southwest Florida during these really difficult times. So this morning we want to introduce you to a woman who is helping her community one meal at a time. Fox Store's Lauren Petrelli is live right now in Fort Myers Beach to show us what this woman is doing. 
Yeah, so earlier this morning, we showed you these shrimp boats that were toppled on top of each other here at Fort Myers Beach. They almost look like toys that someone kind of shoved off to the side over here at the marina. Now, Renda Burant is someone who didn't want all of the praise, but she was a little hesitant to do this interview. I'm so thankful that she allowed us to come here and share this story. Not only is Renda out here feeding everyone, but she also lost her food truck in the midst of all of this. This is one of the refrigerators that was inside of her food truck, which was found down the street, almost upside down. And the way that they're using it right now is they're keeping all of their bread inside, trying to keep it fresh. She says she has about two dozen people here that she's been feeding almost every single day since the storm happened. And she says, these people need help. She's making coffee right over here. Renda, I want to grab you real quickly just to ask you. I know uh, everyone is in line. They're waiting for their breakfast. They're waiting for their coffee. Um, I know you were hesitant to do this story with me, so thank you so much for coming out this morning and doing it. But I want to know, your home is in Cape Coral. What is your draw to this area? Why do you feel passionate about helping these people? Well, I've been feeding them for five years, so why stop now? They need to eat. Yep. Good hot meal. Took a lot of the food from the food truck, donated that to them, had some great people in the community. And it's not just the shrimpers. We got everybody on Main Street we're still helping out and feeding. It's San Carlos Island is a small little island before Fort Myers Beach that sometimes gets forgot about. And so you really just want to make sure this area is not forgotten about. And we did reach out to FEMA about some of your concerns. We're going to get to that a little bit in the show in just a couple of minutes. But I also want to ask you about you. You know, how did you fare during the storm? And you were telling me about your food truck. I mean, just tell me a little bit more about that. I mean, I lost my business. Um, my dad lost his house. But at the end of the day, we're, we're safe. We made it. So I feel I'm lucky. I got to help my guys out, my ladies out. Main you, were, Street. you were telling me though this is all coming out of pocket you don't want to solicit for any donations or anything like that but you probably can only do this for so much longer what is the plan after that we're going to try to figure it out day by day you know we've had some really good customers throw us some cash to get these guys food we've had donations we've had other people drop off food um i'm trying to think of the charity we had do you remember the only charitable organization that came out was the, the Hope people. I can't remember their names right mm -hmm. now, and I feel horrible about that. But we've just had people, some people have dropped off food. One of the guys from Trico dropped off a giant, like, 20-pound thing of pulled pork one day, so that helped out. Mm -hmm. Just the community being a community. And you've been out here rain or shine. I think we actually have some video of that. Renda, I will let you get back to breakfast. I see a lot of people are lined up waiting for you. I, I just want to show that video, though. This was just 24 hours ago. So since Ian, not only is this area devastated, but when Renda comes out in the evenings, we're back to that rainy season pattern. It's starting to pour on them, and they are living in tents. She has a tarp over her grill, and that's how she is feeding everyone right now. So we did reach out to FEMA. We asked them a couple of questions, one about hygiene stations, one about extra bathrooms or even temporary housing. They have specific answers for people that live on boats as their primary residence. We're going to hear that answer coming up on Fox 4 Morning News as they say that is a concern that is starting to rise a little bit more as a lot of people do live on their boats here in Southwest Florida. So right now on Fort Myers Beach, Lauren Petrelli, Fox 4. Awesome to see that. Thanks for the story, Lauren. Well, this morning, uh, sadly, the death toll from Hurricane Ian is now up well over 100. It sits at 108. We are starting to learn more about some of those people whose families want to tell their stories. Fox Force Caitlin Knapp spoke with the sister of a man named Gregory Strasser, who was found dead in his Fort Myers home. Day by day, we're learning more about the victims of Hurricane Ian. Many of those faces are on this remembrance wall in downtown Fort Myers, but some faces are not on here, like Gregory Strasser. I've lost the last person that shared all those memories from when we were kids. Kids, not blood related. He was my big brother. But a bond as if they were. Greg Strasser was adopted at a young age and watched over his younger sister, Janet Link. He was a really gentle soul. Janet says he owned a motorcycle shop before eventually moving to Fort Myers in the early 90s. Greg being Greg, he built, he bought a firehouse in Fort Myers. A home where he hunkered down during Hurricane Ian. He used to always say to me, Jan, don't worry. You worry too much. I'm going to be okay. And, um, and I said, all right, I'm going to call. I'm going to check in on you later. And when later came, his neighbor said that they had found him. Um, deceased in his in his house. This is the last person who knew me when I was born or from the time I was a little 
kid. A little kid that grew up to be a gentle soul, kind-hearted and spiritual. He's saying, don't, don't worry, Jan, which is what he always said. And you know, I'm okay, it's okay, it's okay. I had a good life and enjoy your life. A life Janet will always remember. I'd say I miss you, you. <laughs> I miss you so much. I miss talking to you. In Fort Myers, Caitlin Knapp, Fox 4. Painful. Well, the Lee County Medical Examiner's Office says Strasser died of COPD, though they listed him as a victim of Hurricane Ian. Janet said he used an electric machine to help him breathe. Well, there are a lot of people out there right now who need help getting money to clean or fix their homes. Several disaster recovery centers are open today in southwest Florida to do just that. Yeah, Kylie McGivern is in Fort Myers, where the Department of Economic Opportunity has people on the ground. I'm Kylie McGivern. At FEMA's Disaster Recovery Center at Lakes Regional Library, DEO is acting as a critical piece to help people get back on their feet. People who lost not only their home, but their job. Recently lost my job due to Ian. Raquel De Heredia worked on Captiva in the hospitality industry and tried to apply for unemployment over the phone. You're on hold forever and, or they kick you off. I told him my problems and he was like, come on in, let me help you out. We're inside one of the DEO trailers right now as employees are working to help claimants file for disaster unemployment assistance as we speak. They're also helping with applications for bridge loans and housing assistance funds. What's it like to just have people here like, we will help you, we will walk you through I, this. I was amazed. I mean, I think between the linemen, the different first responders coming from out, it's, it's, it's nice, you know? I'm sorry. It's just, What's coming? I'm emotional to see all the support. It's hard. You, everybody has a, a tragedy. Katherine Nelson with DEO says the stories stick with her from watching someone die in front of them that they couldn't help to a 78 year old man who was swimming in the water for five hours before he was rescued. And it's just, you feel their pain and how some still have just this positive look of thanking us for being here. And I just wanna thank them for being alive and making it. As of Wednesday night, they've served 771 people. The internet, the power, some are still without power. Um, they're without transportation because their cars were flooded, uh, which is why the city buses are going and gathering them. So no one is turned away without their problem being resolved. Disaster unemployment assistance is available until April 1st of next year. If unemployment continues to be a direct result of Hurricane Ian, the deadline to submit a claim is December 30th. In Lee County with photojournalist Randy Wright, I'm Kylie McGivern. All right, Florida Power Light customers need some financial assistance. And if you do, as you are recovering from Hurricane Ian, you can take advantage of the company's Care to Share program. So this is a partnership with local Salvation Army chapters. If you have a lower income, you can get up to $2,000 for electrical repairs needed for crews to safely restore power to your home. If you want to uh, apply for this assistance through FPL or even donate to Care to Share, you can visit fpl.com help. Right now, we're looking at a cold front. This is just one of two in the seven-day forecast. Think you're going to like the second one. We've got more information on the other side of the break. All right, as we head to break, 846 right now, let's get a quick check of your traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them.
849 right now. Let's get a look at some of the top stories we're following for you this morning. Lee County Schools unveiling its plan for classes starting up next week. So they start Monday. 13 schools will be opening it back up. An additional 15 will reopen this Tuesday. The majority of the buildings remain closed, though, with air quality tests ongoing right now. If you want a list of which schools are opening, which ones are staying closed, and what it means for your child, just go to our website, fox4now.com. First responders who have damaged homes from Hurricane Ian will be getting money from the state to help them recover. Governor DeSantis said that $2 million from the Florida Disaster Fund will specifically go to that cause. A couple of organizations will get together today to give out something we keep hearing that people need, shoes and socks. Yeah, the Cajun Navy and the charity Samaritan's Feet will be in Fort Myers. They're giving out 10,000 pairs of shoes and 28,000 pairs of new socks. That's a lot. Yeah. They'll also have shirts, backpacks, hats, purses, and other clothing. It'll happen today from 9 to 5 at Broadway Community Church in Fort Myers. Get started in just a few minutes there on Broadway Circle. All right, this morning the Bayfront in camera showing some sunshine breaking through that cloud deck and we're waiting on a cold front. This one's a weak one and it's slowly going to be moving down the state here today and there's going to be enough moisture pulled in for two more afternoons that we're going to keep a chance of some scattered showers and thunderstorms. I promise you by Sunday we'll be dry with mostly sunny conditions. But let's get you to the radar. What's happening is that front is slowing down because of that moisture on this associated with tropical storm Carl. Carl's way over in the Bay of Campeche and it's not going to impact us directly, but that moisture has helped fuel showers and thunderstorms for the last couple of days. And some of that moisture has given us a couple of light showers out ahead of the front mixed in with some false return. And you can see a few showers moving the other way over the Gulf of Mexico. So while most of us are dry, we are dealing with a little bit of fog out there this morning. 0.04 is officially what we picked up at Page Field, the reporting station there at Naples Airport, still waiting to come back online after Hurricane Ian. Now the temperatures are anywhere from 76 in the Cape to low 70s for Moorhaven and Clewiston. And you can see the visibility here between a mile or two Northport Arcadia uh, looking a little better now for Immokalee LaBelle South as uh, we progress through the afternoon mixture of sun and clouds 87. Those isolated storms gonna be late in the day. Your sunset time at seven o'clock. Today is the last day we have a sunset seven o'clock or later tomorrow 659 and we continue to take those minutes away. 92 is a record. We're gonna be right at our average of 87 as we're waiting for that cold front to continually to drift to the south. This area high pressure not strong enough to push it past this little boundary here. This moisture that wraps into tropical storm Carl uh, that again is gonna move to the southeast into the Bay of Campeche. So the setup here as we look at the overall trend keeps the wind coming here out of the uh, northeast, but you see that moisture fueling showers and thunderstorms later in the day. They'll linger through midnight and then tomorrow. Same idea that moisture on that northeasterly wind gives us a 40% chance later in the day. There comes a drier air on Sunday. A little closer look at it. Here's eight o'clock. There's midnight, some showers lingering by tomorrow. Mix of sun and clouds. There come the thunderstorms, and I just want to show you that these stay through about 9, 10 o'clock, and then the drier air begins to move in. Sunday looks completely different here across southwest Florida. As far as Carl, right now winds of 40 miles per hour moving southeast, and eventually will pull into Mexico and become a remnant low quickly over the mountainous terrain. Ingman Marine forecast here today. Water temperatures at 81. You got to watch out for that storm debris. Weather won't be your issue here, but the seven-day forecast. Check this out. We're going to stay near our average of 87 here for the early parts of next week. And then look at that. Another cold front Tuesday night and Wednesday could spark a couple of showers here, but it's really the cool weather behind it. Mid to upper 50s Thursday morning. How's that sound? Getting for a little taste of fall. All right, time right now is almost 8.54. We'll be right back after this quick break.
Well, this morning, the Naples Zoo will open for the first time since Ian. The zoo says it had some flooding because of storm surge as well as some wind damage, but they say the animals are all safe and they've cleaned up all the debris so they can open again. Take a look at your screen. We have the address for the zoo and the phone number you can call if you'd like to donate to help them recover. The zoo opens up in just a couple of minutes at 9. Restricted access to Bonita Beach has been lifted for people who live there. Fox Sports' John Perrin is live. We're going to hear from people as they are returning back to the beach, some of them for the first time. We'll be right back.
The restrictions have been lifted here at Bonita Beach and now residents are getting an opportunity for the first time for many of them getting a chance to assess the damage and that's exactly what neighbors are doing right here and are trying to see the pieces that are left after Hurricane Ian. Communities are powering back up. We're going to show you the hard work that linemen are doing on Pine Island to get more people back on the grid. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do. Moving on because of Ian. This morning, where you can go to get your children into a new school if the storm has forced you to move. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. Hey, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us for Fox 4 Morning News at 9. I'm Amy Wegman. I'm Chris Shaw. We have a full morning of Ian recovery for you from roads to schools to airports. We have several new reopenings we want to tell you about. We also want to let you know what the weather is going to look like for you today as you might still be out uh, working to clear debris mm -hmm. or perhaps put a tarp on your home. I know Trent yeah. rain has been kind of the focus of the past two days. Is that what we're dealing with today as well? Yeah, we got a chance, but it's going to be late. I think we're going to have a pretty dry morning and early afternoon. Seven to eight o'clock though today could be a different ball game. I know the uh, rainfall yesterday on and off throughout the day kind of slowed things down. Rooftops were wet and things just not optimal for cleanup. But as we look at the uh, radar here this morning, a couple of light showers here down around mainland Monroe. Some of the heavy rain early this morning was over the straits and uh, we're pretty dry from Marco northbound here. This is all false return between Palmdale and LaBelle, but you can see the showers back over the Gulf waters. Our temperatures climbing. We're in the mid to upper 70s and later on today upwards of 87 and the fog looking much better here at 9 o'clock as well. Still a little patchy there from the Peace River uh, from Port Charlotte up to Arcadia. Now throughout the afternoon we're going to be pretty dry, but watch what happens around 7 8. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms. These are going to linger through midnight and then tomorrow we have about a 40% chance again. As we go hour by hour, you see the good mix of sun and clouds 87 your high. That's exactly where we should be for this time of year. Well, new from early this morning, Fort Myers firefighters worked to save several pets from a house fire. Yeah, we hate to hear this. It happened on Sunset Road. It's just south of Lee Memorial Hospital off Cleveland Avenue, very close to the downtown Fort Myers area. The fire chief says it was an electrical fire. It started in the attic of this home. They tell us the woman that lives inside was taken to the hospital, but she is expected to be okay. She's being treated for smoke inhalation. That's because firefighters say she kept going back into the burning home to try and save her animals. While several did die, unfortunately, uh, they died from the smoke. Firefighters say they were able to save a number of ferrets, a dog, and a cat. Well, as power is restored, main roads are cleared. We are seeing some communities across Southwest Florida opening back up without restrictions for the first time. Yeah, that includes the area right around Bonita Beach. For the first time, people who live there have unrestricted access. Let's bring in Fox Source John Barron. He is there live and speaking with people as they return. So here at Bonita Beach, we're actually getting an opportunity to see residents who are actually getting those restrictions lifted for the first time since Hurricane Ian, and they're getting an opportunity to assess the damage, and what they're coming home to is sites like this. They're getting an opportunity to see that most of their belongings are finding their ways in places that they didn't leave them. This truck actually was now sitting in his neighbor's marina, was actually sitting in the front yard of the house on the left, the blue house, and as Stan Sin actually told us a little bit about this, about some of the damage that he's seeing around the house, and as you can see, obviously, clearly, this is just one of the many signs that we're seeing here at Bonita Beach. As you can also see a lot of the debris out here in the water as well, just kind of lining it all in that waterway. But Stan also told us a little bit more about how he came home and he left and went out to Tennessee, but said he was happy that his family was safe and that these kinds of things can be replaced. But it's the impact on Bonita Beach that he's worried about. Da the, the damage is just, it's unbelievable. I mean, when you walk up and down the street, you just, you just can't believe that this could happen. But we're all alive. Everyone I know is. I know there's a lot of people lost their lives. Um, but it, it's going to be a long time until it's put back together. And houses like these, the one that you're looking at right now, where you're seeing the back of their porch is now just kind of submerged halfway in the water. Well, this is Tom's house, his neighbor. He says that this is actually going to be bulldozed down and they're just going to start brand new. He says it's just one of those things that it's just easier to do that way and just get an opportunity at a fresh start. And I believe that's what a lot of people here at Bonita Beach are going to think about doing as they're trying to get back to that sense of normalcy. For now here at Bonita Beach, John Barron, Fox 4.
Thank you very much. Take a look at your screen. Lee County Domestic Animal Services is working to reunite animals with their owners. The department is asking people to turn in stray animals. They will be processed and if no owner is found, the rescuer may adopt that animal. Well, the Lee County School District will do air quality tests on 38 schools today with the hope that they can reopen those schools some at some point next week. Yeah, so the plan right now is for Lee schools to open the schools in phases. Superintendent Dr. Christopher Bernier made that announcement yesterday. Yeah, he says schools will open Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. He says the district will find temporary buildings for the schools that have the most damage. So here's a look at the plan for next week. On Monday, 11 elementary schools to middle schools will be back in class. On Tuesday, 10 elementary schools, one middle school, two Title I schools, and two high schools reopen. The two high schools are Cypress Lake High uh, in Fort Myers and Ida Baker in Cape Coral. You can find a complete list of all of the schools opening Monday and Tuesday. That's on our website, fox4now.com. If you're curious why your child's school isn't on the list to reopen, Lee County Schools put together a video that details out the nine safety criteria that a building has to meet before the kids can return back to class, so you can find that information on their website. It's leeschools.net. And families who had to relocate because of the storm can send their children to a school that's closer to where they live now. Yesterday, the school district opened up offices to make it easier for those parents to re-enroll their children. We spoke to one family who chose to switch to online learning. A man named Paul McCartney from Cape Coral says the storm damaged his house, so his family has decided to move north. He says switching his daughter to online learning will make sure she does not fall behind. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do, so them being set up has been real convenient. Um, but to make the decision, it's not been easy all along. Yeah, of course, you know, we've been in our home now seven years, and time to move on. Now, there's one other group of students to tell you about. Students who go to schools that will not open anytime soon because they were so badly damaged. Well, those students will automatically be enrolled in a nearby school, and they do not need to re-enroll. The school district says it will send an updated plan to parents and staff later today. We want to get you a quick check of your on-time traffic. It's 9.07 right now. We'll get that to you in just a second. But first, city leaders in Cape Coral need your help to expedite the cleanup process. Uh, when you put debris out on the street, make sure you don't block utility boxes or lift stations. The city says by avoiding these areas, it will prevent damage to the boxes and the stations and speed up any repairs that need to be made. The city says it has several claw trucks going around the city. They're picking up that debris. It's going to be a while before all of it is cleared. Radar sweeping around here this morning, picking up a few showers. Question is, how much longer will the wet weather stick around? We got the answer coming up. Just a terrifying, terrible situation to go on a vacation and to not make it home to see your kids. Uh, and the sad thing is, is her daughter bought her her ticket for her birthday to go. It is a heartbreaking reality what family and friends are facing after losing loved ones in Hurricane Ian. At 9.08 now, let's get a look at traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is gonna be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them.
At 912, want to get a look at the other top stories we're tracking for you right now. 99 out of 100 members of European parliaments say Russia should be considered a terrorist regime. Today, they voted to support a resolution that also calls on Russia to withdraw its forces from Ukraine. Turkey did not cast a vote. There is added tension along South Korea's border with the North this morning. South Korea says the North filed, fired another missile and artillery shells today. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff say some of the shells landed inside a buffer zone, which is supposed to be a neutral area between the two countries. And today, the University of Michigan will release its monthly consumer sentiment report that measures how people feel about the state of the economy and the expectations they have moving forward. The report is expected to reflect increased concern about inflation. Well, the Florida Medical Examiner's Commission says the number of confirmed deaths from Hurricane Ian is now at 108. Exactly half of them are in Lee County. Fox 4 Evening Anchor Nadine Yanis spoke with family and friends of those loved ones who lost their lives, including the friend of one woman who was celebrating her 40th birthday on Fort Myers Beach, another one whose uncle didn't survive the storm surge on Matt Lachey. At 66 years old, Mike Verdream had a dream of living on the water in Matt Lachey. Moving to Southwest Florida in 2021, just three hours down the road from his niece and goddaughter, Stacy, whom he helped raise after her dad died when she was just two weeks old. He's always been just a really big part of my life and just kind of always, sorry, always there for me. Um, you know, when I didn't have a dad to do things Stacy last speaking with her uncle the Wednesday morning Hurricane Ian hit. I woke up and I just felt like I need to give him a call and so I gave him a call on Wednesday morning. I spoke with him for um, three minutes and he was he kind of gave me his plan. He said that he was staying there. If it got too bad, he was going to go to a friend's home that um, was two stories. And if it got really bad, he was had a friend that had a truck and they were going to get out of there. It wasn't until several silent days, missed phone calls and miscommunication from neighbors on Matt Lachey, Stacy and her family got the call from the sheriff. It wasn't until the next day um, when we got some more information and we found out that he was found on Friday, um, September 30th, um, and he was a victim of the storm surge, so he never really made it through the storm. Mike Verdream's picture now honored on a growing memorial here in downtown Fort Myers, now one of the 105 people claimed by Hurricane Ian and counting. But loved ones say these are not just numbers. They are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, all lives that need to be remembered. Nichelle Harris Miles was actually on Fort Myers Beach with her sister and two cousins when Ian made landfall. She was here celebrating her 40th birthday, a ticket bought by her daughter, according to close family friend Danette Marshall. It's just a terrifying, terrible situation to go on a vacation and to not make it home to see your kids. Um, and the sad thing is, is her daughter bought her her ticket for her birthday to go. Inside the second story hotel, Nichelle, her sister and cousins tied themselves together with sheets as the storm surge came through. That's when the roof collapsed. Nichelle dying days after turning 40 with her sister witnessing it all. Everybody, you know, they say, why did you go? Why did you go? Why did they go? And they went because they were told by the Airbnb people that, you know, it doesn't get that bad here. And, you know, it's not gonna, it's not calling to come. And when they got there, everything was boarded up and she's not a number or anybody else who lost their life. They're not a number, they're somebody. And they have somebody out there that loves them, that calls them mom, calls them sister, auntie, uncle, you know, all that. I think the message here in all of this is that, um, people will hear this and see this and you know the people who live in Florida might think twice um, and hopefully evacuate the next time a hurricane is coming our way um, so other family members don't have to go through this and I think too it's so important to like help your neighbor like if your neighbor doesn't have a way out scoop them up on your way when you're evacuating and, and take them with you um, I just think 
by telling this story, if we can save one person's life, um, then that means everything. Yeah, and last night, the Medical Examiner's Commission raised the death toll from 105 to now 108 storm victims. Uh, Fox 4's Caitlin Knapp also spoke with another woman who lost her brother. We will continue to honor and remember their lives. We'll have that story coming up on Fox 4 Morning News at 10. Well, the Naples airport will have regular hours today for the first time since Ian hit. One runway will be open for all flights. Another will only have daytime hours. That's because crews still have to repair some lightning damage. The Naples Airport Authority says nearby airports like RSW gave them resources to help them get their runways ready to go again. Right now we're looking live on our tower cam here at Fox 4 and not too bad of a start. Got some sunshine mixing in the clouds. That will allow our temperatures to continue to climb. We should be up around 87 this afternoon. That's right on track for where we should be as this cold front is not going to be quite as strong as what was initially thought earlier this week. It'll still bring some changes late in the weekend, but as you see on the radar as it kind of slows down, we have some lingering moisture on both sides of the state. A couple of very light showers here near Marco Everglade City and a few more out over the Gulf waters, but for the most part, we are dry. Yesterday, we officially picked up 0.04 at Page Field. Naples, we're still waiting for that instrumentation to be up and running again after Hurricane Ian. I know a lot more of you picked up some heavier rain, just kind of a gloomy on and off uh, wet day uh, with those showers and thunderstorms moving through. And our temperature is anywhere from 78 in Marco to 74 Arcadia and Northport, and still just a little bit of patchy fog that's beginning to mix out the northern parts of our viewing area for Hardy, DeSoto, and Sarasota County. You look at the day plan for today, 87. Again, right on track. Sunset, 7 o'clock. Tomorrow, 6.59. We uh, won't see another sunset uh, for 7 o'clock or later until next year. Our record on this date, 92 back uh, 2018, not that long ago. We'll be shy of that as this cold front will be impacting our weather here over the weekend. It's slowing down because you see this moisture. It goes all the way back into Tropical Storm Carl, kind of acting as a little bit of a uh, speed bump, if you will, slowing this front down. The area high pressure not strong enough to push all this through. So with that moisture in place, you're going to see the showers and thunderstorms right around 8 o'clock dissipating here by tomorrow morning and then another line of showers and thunderstorms as we go through tomorrow evening. But here comes the drier air arriving on Sunday. That's when we start to see the sunshine and drier conditions. But to give you an idea, it's later on in the day, 7, 8 o'clock, and there's a snapshot at midnight. So these showers could linger here for a little bit well after sunset, uh, but gone for the morning. And that line won't arrive here until late afternoon, evening tomorrow. So we'll have a window even for Saturday to do a little cleanup. Tropical storm Carl is drifting to the southeast. We talked about that moisture that extends back towards us. This one will begin to move south and eventually southwest, hitting the mountainous train in Mexico and becoming a remnant low. As far as the Ingram Marine forecast, if you don't have to be on the water, don't too much storm debris, but if you are a first responder or running supplies today, uh, winds won't be the issue. Maybe a shower or thunderstorm late in the day. Just keep that in mind. I want to get you over to the seven day forecast here because uh, this front, it may not have been the strongest, but it'll give us drier air Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Look what happens Wednesday when that front moves through mid to upper 50s Thursday morning, only climbing to 78 degrees. We'll take it. Nice little taste of fall as we roll through the third week of October. There really is help everywhere you look, and there's even help for you if you're having electrical problems. $2,000 for repairs, how you can apply for FPL financial assistance. And a 74-year-old man has been living in his destroyed home since Ian rolled through. We'll show you how he finally was able to get the help he needed. It's 920. You're watching Fox 4 Morning News.
It is looking nice and calm at Naples Bay here at 923 on this Friday morning. A little cloudy as we start the day and Trent says there is a chance for some rain as we move through the course of the day. He'll lay that out when you can expect it and where you can expect it in just a few minutes. Well, Florida Power, like customers that need financial assistance as you're recovering from Hurricane Ian, you can take advantage of the company's Care to Share program. This is a partnership with local Salvation Army chapters. So any customer with low income can get up to $2,000 for electrical repairs that are needed for crews to safely restore your power. If you want to apply for this assistance or donate to Care to Share, uh, Share to Care actually, you can visit FPL.com slash help. And power crews will be back on Pine Island today. They will work to restore power to more of the island. Take a look at your screen. I want to show you some video of yesterday, the work that LCEC crews were doing. There's power now on a stretch of Stringfellow Road, which includes the fire stations, Town Center, and Pine Island Elementary School. People have been waiting for this for a while, two weeks. LCEC says its focus right now is on the barrier islands and a few customers in places like Cape Coral and North Fort Myers who still don't have power. Yeah, internet service though, at least on Pine Island, is a very different story right now. People tell Fox 4 almost nobody has it. It's a problem for people who say they're having difficulty applying for FEMA. Uh, some people tell us they are struggling to get a hold of emergency responders. Three, four days ago, we were having problems. They were having trouble locating people because they couldn't call them back. They couldn't keep people on the line. All right, so there is a Starlink hotspot set up in the southern part of the island. Uh, hopefully that will help. They are asking for more resources on the island. I can tell you that FEMA is set up in two locations, and we just got an update that Lee Tran will be busing people on island to get to those two locations, one of which is at the library. So all of that information is on our website. Just go to fox4now.com for more. We'll be right back.
From Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. All right, check it out. This is what it looks like here on top of uh, our studio in Cape Coral where we've seen a little sunshine break through that cloud deck. Yesterday, we didn't see so much sunshine once those showers and storms started to move in around 10 a.m. And now uh, we're still watching the radar because we have a shot to pick up a little wet weather here today as that cold front is slowly trying to get out of our area. You can see some showers between Key Largo, Big Pine Key there approaching the seven mile bridge. Otherwise, it's just kind of hit or miss. A few there along Tamiami Trail, a lot of false return popping in out of the radar. That's not real rain near Sanibel or Captiva. That's a good thing because Boy, some of the heaviest rain was right there in areas we didn't need it from Fort Myers Beach, Harlem Heights to Sanibel the last couple of days. And now you look at the current temperatures, 78 Ochapi, 75 Port Charlotte, 76 in the Cape and visibility improving. Uh, that should all begin to mix out here over the next 20 minutes or so. As far as the forecast for today, we'll stop this around 7, 8 o'clock and you can see a couple of scattered showers and storms lingering through midnight. So we have a chance of rain even overnight tonight. Hour by hour we go, mixture of sun and clouds before that rain moves in late and we will see our temperatures right around our average of 87 later on today. I want to tell you about a pretty important uh, piece of recovery as we work to improve things after Ian. There's a big road that goes through Northport that will reopen this morning. Yeah, it's Price Boulevard and it has extensive damage really from the mm -hmm. storm. Fox 4's Alexandra Ronhell went to Northport this morning to check on the progress there. Alex? Price Boulevard was washed out by Hurricane Ian. It was underwater, causing a lot of damage and erosion. But now you can see this section of the road is now fixed. But over here on this side of the boulevard, we still have a section that is really damaged. We actually have work crews that are working on repairs right now. And this section of the road is close to traffic. We have seen cars navigating around this road closure. Also a few people walking through to get to a bus stop that's at the end of the road. So people are relying on the boulevard to be completely finished. The city says this section could take up to a week to fix. We have images of the flooding the residents of Northport experience. Homes near Price Boulevard and throughout the city were heavily flooded with water reaching several feet in their homes. The city says some areas saw water levels of eight to 10 feet by far the most they've seen. It took several days for the water to recede following cleanup efforts. They got started on this road. Now the city says they're still working to fix the remaining sections. Price Boulevard toward Sumter Boulevard. The city is asking people to drive with caution as construction and repairs are ongoing and we'll keep you updated for when the rest of Price Boulevard will be completed. Reporting in Northport, Alexandra Rangel. All right, Alex, good info. Thank you for that. Take a look at this video. This is from the Matt Lachey Pine Island Fire Control District. The agency posted this drone video. After hearing from a lot of people in the Flamingo Bay area, it was one of the hardest hit areas there on island. Uh, and they wanted to take this drone video for people who can't get back to their homes and check on them in person. So hopefully you can check this out on their social media sites and their website and focus in on your house or friends or family's house and you can see what they're dealing with. Well, we are happy to tell you about this next story. A 74 year old man who lives in a storm damaged home in Matt Lachey says he has hope again. Amy brought you his story earlier this week, and we were there yesterday when volunteers with the Firefighters Association spent the day cleaning out all the furniture in the house and ripping out the drywall. That's what you see here. Johnny Glisson's home took a lot of damage and water in the storm, but he kept living there. When we first met him, he said he was having a hard time reaching FEMA for help, and he couldn't clean the house himself. I didn't think I was going to be able to get through this. I kept saying I am, I am, but then in my heart, I just start saying, Johnny, it's too much. Well, how about this? The Firefighters Association has been working nonstop to help people like Johnny. Their next mission is to fix roofs for other firefighters who need help in Port Charlotte. We have leaders, we have equipment, we have everything needed to get the jobs done. We just don't have the bodies. And there's a sense of urgency felt by a volunteer organization working in Harlem Heights in Fort Myers. They're working to restore so many of the homes that were damaged and destroyed by the storm. Fox 4's Colton Chavez is uh, out and about. He was able to ch catch up with some of the volunteers from Crisis Relief and Recovery. And this morning he's showing us why a helping hand really is making such a difference for so many of these families. It's kind of 
scare. Five-year-old Martha, translating for her grandma who only speaks Spanish, says she was with her family when floodwaters rushed into their home in Harlem Heights. The water was here and we were sleeping where the football. Sleeping on higher ground, Martha tells me, overnight across the street at the Kelly Road soccer complex as their entire neighborhood was underwater. Two weeks later and the floodwaters are gone and organizations like Crisis Relief and Recovery are helping Martha and her family remove everything that was lost. What we try to do first is identify the most vulnerable populations that have had the greatest need and been hit the hardest. Member Ethan Wendell says there's no denying the community of Harlem Heights was hit hard leaving more families needing help than Ethan has volunteers to cover. The urgency is that mold is spreading, actively spreading, and we're in the position right now where if we don't get some stuff done, we're going to turn into a health crisis. Ethan says CRR handles everything from roofs to indoor restoration, but what they need most is helping hands. These crews are, are muck and gut crews. They're, they're bringing stuff out of the house. These are things that almost anybody can do. It's not highly technical contractor work. But it's work that, if not completed soon, could be made worse by the return of afternoon storms. But now that these rains have started back up, every day is another, it's like another disaster because they clean up stuff in the house, then their roof leaks again. So if you're looking to get involved and you want to volunteer, it's easy. All you have to do is come right here to the Harlem Heights Community Center where groups are meeting at both 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day. Every day we'll be starting teams to, to, to partner with our leaders, with other organizations to get this community restored as quickly as possible. In Harlem Heights, Colton Chavez, Fox 4. Love to see that they need so much help there. All right, well, kindness really has been seen all around since the storm hit our beautiful Southwest Florida. Yeah, and this morning, we want to introduce you to a local woman who is helping her community one meal at a time. Fox 4's Lauren Petrelli joins us live from Fort Myers Beach to tell her story. Lauren. Hey, good morning, Chris and Amy. So uh, we have been following Renda Buran all morning long. Uh, she's just a good doer. Out of the goodness of her heart, she's been coming out here and feeding everyone who used to work out on the shrimp boats. Um, a lot of them lost their homes. They lived on the boats, and you can see them behind me. They're just toppled on top of each other. I'm being told by people here that they still have three boats that are floating, but of the three, only one is going to be functioning. So a huge concern of theirs is what is the future of not only them and their jobs, but of the industry as a whole. I want to talk about Renda really quickly because she didn't want any of the praise, but she's been coming out here almost every single day since the storm. I have video here of her in the pouring rain, a tarp over the grill, cooking burgers and hot dogs for people, trying to just make sure they have fresh water and that they're fed. Now that I'm out here this morning walking around, I'm hearing some of the stories of the people who live out here right now and they're struggling, obviously. Kathy, I, I know some of you were very hesitant to talk to me this morning, so thank you so much for, for joining me. You told me your survival story. I mean, you jumped from building to building in we the middle to. of the storm. Can, yeah. Can, yeah, just go ahead. Tell uh, me. We were up in a loft up here and it's like four people in it and there was no middle beam it got wet. The water got all the way up there. And then when the water recited, we thought we had a second part of a storm coming. Mm -hmm. So in between there, that double E, they threw keys down for just another man to open the door for us to get up in here and get higher. We just thought we were getting, like they say, the second part of it's mm -hmm. worse. We didn't know what part was what. We never saw, us. we had rain and everything, but nothing like the beginning of that. It's something you told me, I asked you, you know, how scary was that for you to jump literally from this building, walk across here into this building, and you said you didn't have time to think about any emotions. Know. You don't have any time, okay? You're just moving. It's move, or, you know, that neck gust is coming, okay? And you're going with it, you know? It's just survival skill. I'm a shrimper. And what do you need? You and I were talking. Obviously, you guys need running water. You need some electricity. Yeah. You know, what? Yeah, uh, how can I help? To a couple of places just looking for some generators. Okay. okay? Um, they don't know how much longer on any of the power, how long it's going to be, and it's mm -hmm. getting a little rough. We need a little light around here. 
Yeah, you guys, you guys definitely you need help. I light. see you right here. Okay, uh, you're I, getting, getting me too. But um, I know a lot of you had questions about your primary residence. Some of you guys uh, live yeah. on your boat. There's yeah. a different number to call, yeah. um, which I handed out to everyone. Yeah. But while I was on the phone with FEMA, I asked them if they were going to be coming out here to help you. Yeah. I have a bit of the interview with them. Uh, if we could just go to that. So that way people who are still staying on Fort Myers Beach, because this group, they're not the only ones. Uh, here's what they said about getting help out here. Or is there anything planned for Fort Myers Beach like so, that? So we do have some folks down at Fort Myers Beach today doing a similar thing, but I will tell you there's a difference with regard to those folks and what's at a disaster recovery center and what um, you would get by calling in. The disaster recovery center and calling in, they're going to have more access to the system to be able to, to kind of uh, work with it as opposed to what you're seeing on Pine Island or uh, Fort Myers Beach or any of our other disaster survivor assistance teams that are kind of out in the community. They're really there to register people and to explain the process. If you're coming in with like a more complicated scenario where you've already registered and you're really looking to update information. I just need to know where the closest one is. So we're back right now, and she was just telling me a couple other things that they need help with. So here are just a couple of things to note. They are trying to get more resources out to Fort Myers Beach. She said that they don't have a setup site right now, like a disaster recovery site. But when I asked Matt, I said, okay, with FEMA, um, these people don't have cars. Their cars were obviously swept away. So we're working to see if we can get maybe a shuttle or something to get a lot of these people to the disaster recovery sites that Matt was just talking about. Kathy, I know I gave you this number, but in case yeah. someone's watching, yes. um, if your primary dwelling is a boat, a lot of people in Southwest Florida live on their boats. This is the number to call so you can get more information. This is specifically for the boaters. It's 1-800-621-3362. Six two and uh, Kathy, I also I didn't want to cut you off. You said you have a need for ATMs or where, a way to get to them. Where can we find any, any ATM okay. machines that work? Okay. I mean, then we have a problem getting there, but yeah. it's just that give, I don't even know. We have no TVs or nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on really, or where what's open, what's not open. Okay, I, I keep get my Facebook every once in a while, but just running around trying to get a charge. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're we're going to work on that because clearly the ATM, running water, electricity, and temporary housing are a huge need here. We're going to continue to ask questions with FEMA, but also with the town of Fort Myers Beach and see what we can do for everyone like Kathy and everyone else who's still living out here on Fort Myers Beach. We'll send it back into you for now. And thank you very much. Information cutoff is something a lot of people are dealing with and have been since the storm came through. Well, where Lauren is right now, a big industry there is the fishing industry, and it has some new challenges to deal with because of the hurricane. The storm surge took out most of the shrimping industry along Fort Myers Beach. As you look at this video, consider these numbers. Of the 50 boats in port during Ian, only two can be used for fishing right now. On Pine Island, four of the five fish houses were destroyed. All of the commercial docks around them are gone, and the grouper boats were severely damaged. The owner of Island Seafood Market on Matt Lachey says the area's identity is now in jeopardy. Fishing industry and commercial industries in this area, we're going to lose the founding of what founded this area. I mean, our commercial fishermen on Pine Island especially, I mean, the original infrastructure on this island was set to get catch from fishermen to market. So, I mean, the culture, the history of what made this area unique in the first place is, is gone or going to be gone, and I don't want to see that happen. So he and other fishermen hope the state and federal governments will help them by declaring a fishery disaster order. And the FWC Division of Marine Fisheries said in this email to Fox 4, FWC has already been in contact with our partners in the industry and are coordinating the next steps. They say as soon as a rapid assessment is conducted, we anticipate that the state will be requesting federal fisheries disaster declarations from the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Well, not even a huge, impactful storm like Hurricane Ian can stop these kids. A Lehigh Acres team is hitting the field. Regardless of the circumstances, we're going to share their story coming up. Let's get a quick check of your traffic hotspots at 943. When clients call Fair and Fair, 
they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them. It's 946 right now on your Friday morning. Let's get a look at some of the top stories we're following right now. Today, police in North Carolina will release more information about a shooting they say killed five people, including an off-duty police officer. It took police several hours, they say, to arrest the suspect, who they only described as a juvenile male. Two others were wounded. Former President Trump says he will respond to the January 6th committee today. The House committee investigating last year's January 6th riots at the Capitol voted unanimously to subpoena the former president. One committee member said, quote, we must seek the testimony under oath of January 6th central player. The former president responded on his social media platform calling the committee, quote, a bust. Lee County Schools unveiling the plan for starting classes back up next week. They start on Monday for 13 schools and then an additional 15 will open on Tuesday. The majority of buildings, however, for Lee County Schools are closed. Air quality, air quality tests are happening right now uh, for a list of the openings, which schools are staying closed, and more information for your students moving forward. Again, in Lee County, you can just go to fox4now.com. First responders who have damaged homes from Hurricane Ian will now get money from the state to help them recover. Governor Ron DeSantis made this announcement yesterday. Two million dollars from the Florida Disaster Fund will go specifically to our first responders. Well, this is a lot easier said than done, but right now a lot of us are trying to get back to some sort of normalcy. Yeah, you have to, right? So Fox 4's Yvette Sanchez, she hit the field with a Lehigh Acres Pop Warner team that decided the storm's aftermath was not going to keep them from practicing. 
We have all five of our teams in playoffs this season. After Hurricane Ian, parents were eager to know where were their kids going to practice? When we're going to continue our season, when we're going to continue our practice and our games. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, you could find parents in these exact stands yelling and cheering on their kids who play or cheer for the Lehigh Raiders. But after Hurricane Ian, no one is allowed on the field. After Jacob Kennedy, athletic director of the Pop Warner team, put his feelers out, Pastor Nick Yantorn at Rice Christian Church received a text message. We can definitely offer up what we have, and uh, it's been awesome that we could do this for our community. With over 250 kids, Pastor Nick knew his fields weren't the best, but he gave them a practice field and gridiron regardless. I thought it was just even more incredible than being able to help one single team with one group of cheerleaders. With playoffs next week. Huge help to our organization for Nick to come in and, and allow us to use the field is a huge help. Kennedy says this is more than just a practice for the Raiders. We're here for the kids mainly and getting them back out here to practice was huge. It gets them into a routine and it helps the parents get some time to kind of gather their thoughts while we have their kids out here playing football and cheer. In Lehigh, Yvette Sanchez, Fox 4. Well, right now, the Naples Zoo is open for the first time since Ian. The zoo says it had some flooding damage because of storm surge, as well as some wind damage. But they say all the animals are safe, and they've been able to clean up the debris, so they are open once again. Take a look at your screen. We have the address for the zoo and the phone number you can call if you'd like to donate to help the zoo recover. It is open right now, opened about an hour ago. Right now, you're looking live from top of uh, our studios here at Fox 4. This is uh, looking off there to the southeast, and things looking pretty good. We see the sunshine breaking through the cloud deck. <clears throat> One thing we will have again today, at least a chance of a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm here as a cold front is slowly trying to slide through the area. It's a little slower than anticipated earlier this week, and it won't quite have the cooler weather behind it. For now, we do have another one in the seven day forecast. Let's take a tour around town right here south of Marco Island, Cape Romano, a couple of very light showers. This is all false return off of North Captiva, Captiva and Cayo Costa. And as we kind of broaden the view here, US 27 out towards the lake, we are dry. We're waiting on the Naples reporting site there at the airport to get back up and running after Hurricane Ian, but officially out of Page Field yesterday, 0.04, the record on the date over two and a half back in 1961. As far as our temperatures right now, we're slowly climbing up. We'll eventually be up to around 87. The visibility improving quite a bit as well. Had some uh, decent fog this morning. That's all that moisture ahead of the cold front. And with the moisture sticking around for a day or two, we got a chance of an isolated shower or storm. Temperature of 87. That sunset time coming up there at 7 o'clock. 92 the record back in 2018. Just a few years back, we broke a record a few days ago hitting 94. Now we're waiting on a cool change. There's a couple things happening. This high pressure ridge uh, not quite strong enough to push through this moisture that stretches back towards tropical storm Carl. So the front's going to slowly slide as it does. So it won't be until Sunday to where that drier air begins to move in. And as we look at the forecast here for today, right around seven, eight o'clock, we'll see some showers, maybe a few thunderstorms, a linger past midnight. And then for tomorrow, you see that northeasterly breeze kicking up the moisture, pushing it right along our coastline. And then Sunday, finally, the drier air moves in, mostly sunny and dry conditions. A little closer up look here to help you plan the next a day or two. Here we are after sunset, which is seven o'clock tonight. Those showers lingering through midnight and by tomorrow morning dry. We'll see quite a bit of sunshine, but late afternoon and early evening. Here comes the rain. It's out of here uh, by nine, 10 o'clock and then for Sunday dry and sunny as we get a little lower humidity as well. I mentioned tropical storm Carl. This one will quickly uh, become a remnant low here in the next couple of days as right now winds are at 40 miles per hour. Once it interacts there with the mountainous train in Mexico, it's pretty much all but done. Ingram Marine forecast here. Got to watch out for that storm debris. Wind really won't be an issue. It'll be out of the northeast today, 5 to 10. Want to spend some time here on the seven day forecast because even though we're going to see isolated showers and storms, our temperatures near normal until here, Tuesday, Wednesday. A strong cold front's going to move through. Right now, all indications are we could see highs there in the upper 70s, overnight lows, mid to upper 50s. And if I did my research right, this is going to be the first time in four years that we've seen temperatures in the 50s before November the 1st. Time is 9.52. We'll be right back after this quick break.
sky over Naples Bay right now. You see the planes flying in, the cloud cover, and a little bit of that blue peeking through. No rain right now, but we could experience some later in the day. Uh, Trent, we'll have your full forecast coming up at 10 o'clock. Well, Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz will spend the rest of his life behind bars. When the judge read the jury's decision yesterday, Parkland parents looked stunned and disappointed. The jury decided to sentence Cruz to life instead of the death penalty. Right, they would have had to have a unanimous decision to go with the death penalty and three jurors voted against it. The 12 person jury listened to almost four months of graphic evidence and emotional testimony. And the expectation for some of the parents was that if there was ever a case for the death penalty, they thought it was this one. 17 beautiful lives were cut short by murder. Heinous, pre-planned, torturous murder. And the monster that killed them gets to live another day. We are beyond disappointed with the outcome today. This should have been the death penalty, 100%. Now, some family members said that Nicholas Cruz's sentence sets a precedent that when a future mass shooting happens, the punishment will be life in prison. Still to come this morning on Fox 4 Morning News at 10, people making their way home, some of them for the first time since Hurricane Ian. Yeah, we'll take you live to the area around Bonita Beach, which is now open as that community starts to rebuild.
It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do. Moving on because of Ian, this morning, where you can go to get your children into a new school if the storm has forced you to move. And restrictions have been lifted here at Bonita Beach as many of the residents are now getting an opportunity to assess the damage. We'll tell you exactly what they're seeing when we come back. Sense of relief and recovery as more lights are coming back on. Crews are back at it on Pine Island this morning to get more people the electricity they so desperately want and need. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. And good morning. Thanks so much for joining us for Fox 4 Morning News at 10 today. I'm Amy Wegman. Good morning, everybody. I'm Chris Shaw. We have a full hour of Ian recovery for you from roads to schools to airports. There are several new reopenings to tell you about. Yeah, but first we want to get you a check of your weather. Uh, we know so many communities are still working to clean up. We know a lot of you still have damage to your roofs and maybe you haven't been able to get a tarp on. So. Weather has been the focus the past couple of days. Let's check in with our certified meteorologist Trent Eric. We saw the rain. I know there might be some today, but what's yeah. it really looking like for everyone? Uh, we're going to get kind of in a summertime pattern again today. We're going to see a chance of some showers and thunderstorms late about a 30 to 40 percent. Only difference is we have a front that is slowly moving down the state and that moisture is still sticking ahead of it. And you can see showers and thunderstorms off the East Coast, even a few light showers here off of Collier County. But most of the inland area is really not being impacted. The showers are out over the open and water and later on today 7 8 o'clock pretty late we'll see that thunderstorm chance begin to pop up our temperatures right now 81 in cape coral bonita springs upper 70s inland and you can see the visibility much improved from this morning where we had some patchy fog around town let's get you a look at the computer model for today you see 7 8 o'clock the thunderstorms developing they'll linger here through midnight so we'll see some rain overnight as well and with our temperatures climbing up to 87 pretty typical for this time of year 87 is our average high as power is restored and a lot of the main roads are cleared out, we are seeing communities across Southwest Florida opening up. And in some cases, people are heading back to check out their homes and businesses for the first time. Yeah, and for the first time, people in Bonita Beach in that area are doing just that. Fox Tours' John Barron is live in that area right now as people return. And John, you're getting a chance to speak with some of them. Yeah, absolutely. So Chris and Amy, you guys brought up a good point. This is one of the first times that a lot of these residents are coming back. You know, we do have a lot of people who are up in the north making their way down here for some of those homes that they have during that summertime. And, you know, when we take a look at some of the damage they're seeing, this is what they're taking a look at. Some of them coming back to some of those cars that find their way into the waterways here, like this marina. As you can see, this is one of the many trucks that we've already shown you that have really found their way into the water. And these were obviously parked up at the front yard. So that really tells you how strong that storm surge was to lift these cars into a completely different area and this one sitting on top of a post. So this is the kind of destruction we're seeing around Bonita Beach and we actually spoke with one of the neighbors who told us Stan actually uh, excuse me we spoke with uh, you know him about him and his family about what we could really see and they were telling us you know this is the kind of destruction that they didn't want to have to come back to but they're thankful that their family is okay and other things can just be replaced. Da the, the damage is just it's unbelievable. I mean, when you walk up and down the street, you just you just can't believe that this could happen. But we're all alive. Everyone I know is. I know there's a lot of people lost their lives, um, but it, it's going to be a long time till it's put back together. And this is the Sin family right here. They're actually working right now in their backyard. Their pool has been flooded with debris and mud, and they're actually having to kind of just clean it out right now. And they're filling it up right here, and, and they're just taking it to the front yard, hoping that debris can be taken away. We've seen a couple of those trucks already do so. And as you can see, actually, you can kind of take a look at that white truck that we were showing you, that Silverado. That is halfway. The bed is submerged in the marina, and that's also another truck that we've been telling you. And actually, the house across right there with the blue roof. They are actually the owner told us that he's actually just going to knock it down and just start fresh. He said there's no point in trying to, you know, restore this right now. He just wants to start out fresh and just kind of have a new. So that's one of the other options that a lot of people are saying here. Bonita Beach is something that they're going to start taking a look at. We'll have more for you guys coming up later on in the show. But for now here live at Bonita Beach, John Barron, Fox 4. A lot of damage, a lot of work to do, John. Thank you very much. Well, the Lee County School District will do air quality tests on 38 schools today with the hope that they can reopen next week. Right, so the plan right now is to open Lee County schools in phases. Superintendent Dr. Christopher Bernier made the announcement yesterday. He says schools will open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. 
The district will find temporary buildings for schools with the worst damage. So here's a look at the plan for next week. On Monday, it's uh, 11 elementary schools and two middle schools that will be headed back to class. Uh, on Tuesday, it's 10 ele elementary schools, one middle school, two Title I schools, and two high schools. Uh, the two high schools are Cypress Lake in Fort Myers and Ida Baker in Cape Coral. There's a full list uh, of the schools opening up on Monday and Tuesday, the reopenings, all of that on fox4now.com. If you're wondering when you see your child's school listed and where it stands, if it's not uh, open again, Lee County Schools put together a video detailing what the nine safety criteria are for them to open up the buildings for students to head back in safely. So you can find that information when you go to their website and there's a video there. It's leeschools.net. And families who had to relocate because of the storm can send their children to a school that's closer to where they live now. This morning, the school district has five locations open to make that process of re-enrolling a little easier. Those sites are in Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Lehigh Acres, and Bonita Springs. The addresses are right here on your screen. You can also find this information on our website, fox4now.com. These sites are open from 9 until 4.30 or until the last person in line has been helped. And we spoke to a family who was at one of those centers and chose to switch to online learning. A man named Paul McCartney, who is from Cape Coral, says the storm damaged his house, so his family has decided to move north. He says switching his daughter to online learning will help make sure she doesn't fall behind. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do, so them being set up has been real convenient. Uh, but to make the decision, it's not been easy all along. Yeah, of course, yeah, we've been in our home now seven years and time to move on. Now, there's another group of students who go to schools that will not open anytime soon because they are so badly damaged. Those students will automatically be enrolled into a nearby school and they do not have to re-enroll. Well, the boil water notice for all Lee County utility customers has been lifted. Earlier this week, the majority of customers were able to safely use that drinking water. Well, now the Town and River community, North Trail RV Park and Siesta Isles neighborhood, they are all in the clear as well. So if you don't pay Lee County Utilities for your water bill and you have a different utility provider, uh, you can contact contact them, excuse me, to find out where you stand with a boil water notice. Most of them are putting it on their social media pages as well. All right, city leaders in Cape Coral, they're asking for your help to expedite the cleanup process. They're saying when you put debris out on the roadway and on the curbside, make sure not to block utility boxes and lift stations. They say by avoiding those areas, you can prevent damage to the boxes and speed up repairs that need to be made. City officials in the Cape say they do have several claw trucks going around right now. They're picking up debris, but please be patient. Uh, we know that this is gonna take quite a while before it's all cleared. Power crews will be back on Pine Island today. They are working to restore power to more of the island. Until yesterday, pretty much all of the island had been without power. But this video you see right here is the work that LCEC crews did yesterday. So there is now power on a stretch of Stringfellow Road, which includes the fire stations, the town center, and Pine Island Elementary School. LCEC says its focus is on the barrier islands and a few customers in places like Cape Coral and North Fort Myers who still don't have power. Internet service, at least on Pine Island, is a different story right now. People there tell us almost nobody has it. That's a problem for people who say they can't apply for FEMA help. Some people tell us they are struggling to just get a hold of emergency responders. Four days ago, we were having problems. They were having trouble locating people because they couldn't call them back. They couldn't keep people on the line. Our link hotspot is set up on the southern part of the island, but people say it doesn't have enough bandwidth and they are asking for more resources to meet the need. The Naples airport is back open today. This is the first time it's been open since the hurricane made landfall. Uh, not all of the runways are open there at the Naples airport because crews are still working to fix some of the lights that were damaged in the storm. The Naples Airport Authority says other nearby airports like Southwest Florida International provided resources to help them get most of their runways back up and running again. Well, this is good to see. First responders who have storm damage will get millions of dollars to help them clean up their homes. Governor Ron DeSantis made that announcement when he was here in Punta Gorda yesterday. The money will come from the Florida Disaster Fund. It's raised more than $45 million so far, and $2 million of that money will go to first responders. 
Florida Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed sent a letter asking for federal help for farmers. She wants a USDA secretarial disaster designation for farms in 17 counties. They include Lee, Collier, Charlotte, DeSoto, Hendry and Sarasota counties. Freed says preliminary damage assessments show farms in those areas do meet the requirements to get that federal help. It's 10-10 right now. The election is now less than four weeks away and Governor Ron DeSantis is expanding voting access in counties that were devastated by the storm. So that includes Southwest Florida. The governor's executive order expands the number of days and locations where you can go for early voting. This also allows you to call the supervisor of elections office and by phone you can request a mail-in ballot. That would be instead of the previous uh, requirement, which was a signature. Jenya Coulter is the senior elections analyst for a nonpartisan group called OSET. She used to work in Polk County at an elections office. She's worked elections after storms, and she says to voters here in Southwest Florida, make sure you take advantage of these extra early voting options. It also frees things up for election offices because early voting locations almost always have the best trained poll workers. They may not have a huge staff, but they've got a very experienced staff. So uh, make sure that you take advantage of that. We've got information on uh, who's running and what you need to know about the upcoming election on our website, fox4now.com. By the way, the governor's order also waives training requirements for poll workers. All right, this is a situation that so many people are finding themselves in. We've met them face to face here at Fox 4 after the storm. They have no home, they have no car, and they sadly have nowhere to go. But there are emergency shelters opened up all over Southwest Florida to give those people a roof and four walls. One of the largest is the American Red Cross shelter at Hertz Arena. Fox 4's Calvin Lewis spoke with some of the people who are staying in the shelter there at Hertz Arena to get a little perspective on what it's like. There's a lot of people that are stranded here that have absolutely nothing and no way. Inside Hertz Arena, you'll find survivors of Hurricane Ian with all sorts of backgrounds, like Roland Flores, a veteran who was previously at another shelter. I'm hoping not to be here for more than an, another week. And uh, I guess the VA is trying to, you know, get things worked out. They're putting some of us vets up in a, a hotel or something. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. At least I'll be someplace where it's safe. It's been two weeks since Hurricane Ian made landfall, and survivors are still trying to figure out how they are going to recover. But with each passing day and every hour, tensions are getting higher. It's like no one cares, but they, but they act like they do. Charles Terrell is another one of those who sought refuge at the arena. Me, I'm not homeless, but half these people that came here, they were homeless before they got here. And then, you, and then you do have genuine people that lost their homes and this and that. People like Brittany Allen, a wife and mother to seven children. We're, we sleep on an ice rink, so <laughs> to try to get off the ice would be amazing. While resources have been provided, like hot meals, running water, and electricity, she says conditions have progressively worsened over time. It is completely packed. There are still those sleeping on the floor. Um, you know, there are still those sleeping up in the stands. Um, a lot more people are sick, a lot more cough. The elderly are, you know, they actually took three people to the hospital while we were here due to dehydration. And at the same time, efforts are being made to help those survivors find their footing post shelter. We also have now our caseworkers that are coming in and these caseworkers are assigned to the individuals and will help them find a transition plan. So once they move on from the shelter, they know exactly what's going to happen. In the meantime, these survivors will keep taking it day by day. But still, we keep fighting, we keep plugging on, you know, we're going to get it done one way or another. But that's because that's who we are, you know. In Lee County, Calvin Lewis, Fox 4. And the Red Cross says that they will keep Hertz Arena open as long as they need to as a shelter. Right now, they say they have about 400 people sheltered there, uh, but they have the capacity to hold another 600. Lee County Domestic Animal Services is working to reunite animals with their owners. The department is asking people to turn in stray animals. They will be processed, and if no owner is found, the rescuer may adopt that animal. 
Well, the commercial fishing industry here in Southwest Florida has some new challenges to deal with because of Ian. Take a look at this video. It is unforgettable the shape that some of these boats are in. The storm surge took out most of the shrimping industry along Fort Myers Beach. Listen to these numbers. Of the 50 boats that were in port during Ian, only two can be used. On Pine Island, four of the five fish houses were destroyed. All of the commercial docks around them are gone and the grouper boats were severely damaged. The owner of Island Seafood Market on Matt Lachey says the area's identity is now in jeopardy. Fishing industry or commercial industries in this area, we're going to lose the founding of what founded this area. I mean, our commercial fishermen on Pine Island especially, I mean, the original infrastructure on this island was set to get catch from fishermen to market. So, I mean, the culture, the history of what made this area unique in the first place is, is gone or going to be gone, and I don't want to see that happen. Well, that's why he and other fishermen hope the state and federal governments will help them by declaring a fishery disaster order, and we could be headed in that direction. The FWC Division of Marine Fisheries said this in an email to Fox 4. FWC has already been in contact with our partners in the industry and, the coordinating, and are coordinating the next steps. As soon as a rapid assessment is conducted, we anticipate that the state will be requesting federal fisheries disaster declaration from the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Well, the harbor master from Fort Myers Beach posted a video on Twitter, and he's warning people about what's in the harbor in the Matanzas Bay mooring field. Austin Gilchrist said the mooring field is closed for now, and the no-wake zones are still in place, even if you don't see a sign up. Gilchrist said to watch for the debris and the damaged docks, adding there aren't many docks even for boats to dock at right now, so it's best to probably just stay out of the area. And FWC has a hotline so people can report boats and other vessels that were set loose during the hurricane. The storm surge sent thousands of them out to sea and it pushed some to shore and damaged others in marinas. So the phone number you see right on your screen is the one to call. You can do that Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. You will need to give FWC some information like the registration number, if you can find it, the location and a description of the boat. All right, right now you're looking live here from the top of our studios out of Fox 4 and things looking pretty good out there. We're still trying to uh, get through that cloud deck of the sunshine in full force, but as we go throughout the afternoon, that mix of sun and clouds is going to be because of a cold front that is slowly starting to work through the area. As it does so, uh, we'll see a 40% chance of rain later on and we're looking like 7, 8 o'clock, so later in the day and just a couple of very light showers out over the Gulf waters. All the green you're seeing here from Cayo Costa down towards Sanibel, that's all fall street turn a few real showers moving away from the coastline so kind of a messy setup here early that front put on its brakes and the reason being hit a lot of moisture this stretches back to tropical storm carl the high pressure ridge behind it not quite strong enough but it did help fuel some showers and thunderstorms the last couple of days the naples reporting site still not operational after the hurricane but we got 0.04 out of page field Right now we're sitting at 81 there in Fort Myers, 80 in Marco, mid to upper 70s from Northport all the way out towards the lake. And we had patchy fog this morning. Matter of fact, the northern part of the state today had dense fog advisories. We saw our visibility down around a mile, especially from the Peace River north here early. Isolated storms late. Your sunset time at 7 o'clock. That's notable because starting tomorrow, we won't see another sunset 7 o'clock or later until next year tomorrow 659 let's get you over to the almanac uh, the high of 87 today is right at where we should be for this time of year now we set a record a couple days ago reaching 94 the record on this date is 92 going back just a few years back to 2018 record low 54 in the late 70s so here's the setup area low pressure off the outer banks there's a cold front this is a high pressure ridge just trying to knock that front through but this moisture that stretches all the way back towards carl that is kind of what's uh, interacting here and giving us that chance of rain you see all the moisture there from the Bahamas through the Florida Straits. Now, Carl, in the next day or two, is going to continue to move south into Mexico. This cold front knocking it away from the U.S. It won't be an issue for uh, anyone here. Uh, we just kind of were watching it of interest because of the name, checking it off the list, and also uh, what it did to our forecast the last couple of days. And that moisture is going to linger around. So for today, showers and thunderstorms, 7 to 8 o'clock, they'll still be here around midnight. And then tomorrow, there's still enough moisture in place that even though we've got a northeasterly flow, showers and thunderstorms lined up along the coast. But finally, on Sunday, here you go. Dry air, plenty of sunshine, no rain.
It's the first of two cold fronts on the map. We'll get to the other one in a moment. A little closer up look so you can plan your day. There's that time frame between 7 and 8 and by midnight still raining in some parts of southwest Florida. And then here come the thunderstorms tomorrow. Uh, those will stay till 9 to o'clock. But here comes that drier air sliding on through for Sunday. So with Carl, the 8 o'clock advisory winds 40 miles per hour. Then with that cold front knocking it to the south, quickly interacts with Mexico and goes into a remnant low uh, pretty quickly uh, there by Sunday morning. As far as the Marine forecast here sees foot or less light chop on the inland waters. Water temperature at 81 degrees. Your forecast for today. 87 right on track for where we should be a little kind of a summer like pattern there with the showers and storms. A few showers overnight under partly cloudy skies and the seven day forecast. We stay near normal, but I think you're going to like this. Check out Tuesday and Wednesday. Next front moves through. We're going to be in the 50s, and if that verifies, which right now all the models showing a pretty good slide down of cold air, it'll be the first time in four years that we've been in the 50s before November the 1st. Nice, Trent. Thank you. A 74 year old man has been living in his destroyed home since Ian came through. This morning, we'll show you how he finally got the help he needed. 1021 is the time right now. Let's take a look at traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in. And we're there to help them. Well, this morning we have a positive story to share with you. Hope is back for a 74 year old man living in his devastated flooded home on Mount Lachey. I first introduced you to Johnny earlier this week. He told us that he needed help uh, and he got that help. A half dozen firefighters with the Florida State Firefighters Association spent the day yesterday clearing out his furniture, ripping out drywall from his home. He just texted me five minutes ago and said they saved him two weeks. Johnny has been living here in the home since the hurricane hit, and he didn't know how he was going to make it through this cleanup process until now. Uh, as you can see, they unloaded furniture from the house and they did so much work cleaning up, uh, and he just says he couldn't be more grateful. I didn't think I was going to be able to get through this. I kept saying I am, I am, but then in my heart, I just start saying Johnny, It's too much. 
They helped him so much yesterday inside the house. As we speak, first responders from Matt Lachey Pine Island Fire District are on his roof, taking some of that twisted metal from the lanai off because he told me he cannot get up on a ladder. Their mission next, the Florida State Firefighters Association, is to fix roofs for other firefighters who need help in Port Charlotte. So glad to see they're doing this that work. And here's another way people can get help. Laundry detergent company Tide has set up a couple of places where people can go and wash their clothes. Tide will have trucks at the Walmart on McCall Road in Inglewood and in North Fort Myers at the Walmart on Pine Island Road. Now this is free for anyone who doesn't have a way to wash their clothes right now. The trucks are open from 9 until 5. We are live this morning over at Fort Myers Beach where a lot of the people in the community from the waterfront working community are meeting. We have someone out here who's doing their best to bring a little normalcy to all of the chaos. They have condiments and they have some food, chips. They even have a grill where they have been firing this up and feeding as many people as they possibly can. Not only are we going to hear from that woman, but we are also going to hear stories of survival of people who stayed on Fort Myers Beach. That and more coming up on Fox 4 More. Morning news. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News.
10.30 is the time. We're taking a live look from the Bayfront Inn down in Naples. And you definitely see the darker skies, the cloud deck, and off to the east, we do have some showers and thunderstorms out over the Atlantic waters. So we've got a cold front that's trying to push through the area. It's going to take its time, and uh, that moisture is going to be around for a bit. These are the darker skies there. You see it off in the distance from Naples. Uh, otherwise, it's just been some light showers over the last couple of hours from Marathon, Seven Mile Bridge, now working its way towards Isla Mirada and Layton. And for us, a couple of hit or miss, very light showers on the 10,000 Island area mixed in with a lot of false return. There's no rain there in Cayo Casa, Sanibel or Captiva, but some real showers out over the Gulf. Our temperatures, which right now are roughly around 80 across the board, are going up to 87. That's exactly where we should be this time of year, even though it's a lot cooler than the 94 we hit days ago. As far as the radar, right around 7, 8 o'clock, we're going to start to see a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm or two go up, and that's going to linger through midnight. It won't be until Sunday that the dry air moves through and keeps our rain chances near zero, and you can see this afternoon again those storms popping up. We'll be back in here in a minute to talk about your extended forecast. All right, Trent, we'll see you soon. Well, this is new from overnight. Fort Myers firefighters work to save several pets from a house fire. Yeah, it's uh, happened near the downtown area off of Sunset Road. It's just south of Lee Memorial Hospital, close to Cleveland Ave. The fire chief says it was an electrical fire that started in the attic of this home. The woman who lives in the home was taken to the hospital. The chief says she should be okay. She was treated for smoke inhalation because she kept going back into the house to try and save her animals. Several of her animals unfortunately died from the smoke, but firefighters say they were able to save a number of ferrets, a dog, and a cat. Well, we've seen so much damage from Hurricane Ian. We want to show you the signs of recovery, and a big one is happening today in Northport with the opening of a pretty major road. Yeah, it's Price Boulevard, and there was a lot of damage on Price Boulevard from Hurricane Ian. Fox 4's Alexandra Ronhell went to Northport, and she's checking out the progress as it opens back up to you. Price Boulevard was washed out by Hurricane Ian. It was underwater, causing a lot of damage and erosion, but sections of this boulevard have now been fixed, but there's still a big portion of Price Boulevard that still needs to be rebuilt. You can actually check on this side. We have construction workers right now working on road repairs as we speak. The road is blocked off to traffic. We've actually seen a couple of people try to navigate around the road closure. We've also seen some people trying to walk through and get to a bus stop that's on the other side. The city says this section could take up to a week to finish. We have images of the flooding. The residents of Northport experience homes near Price Boulevard and throughout the city were heavily flooded with water reaching several feet in their homes. The city says some areas saw levels of 8 to 10 feet. By far the most they've seen, it took several days for the water to recede. Following cleanup efforts, they got started on the road. Now, the city says they're still working to fix the remaining sections of Price Boulevard toward Sumter Boulevard. The city is asking people to drive with caution as construction and repairs are ongoing, and we'll keep you updated for when the rest of Price Boulevard will be completed. Reporting in Northport, Alexandra Rangel. Well, kindness has really been shown all around. I've seen it with my own two eyes. I know you have too yeah. during these really difficult times. So much help coming in from all over. And this morning, we want to introduce you to a woman who is helping her community one meal at a time. Fox Soar's Lauren Petrelli is live on Fort Myers Beach speaking with her, and she's going to tell us what she's doing. Yeah, good morning, Chris and Amy. Renda has been so busy all morning long making breakfast. I actually stepped away from her for a moment because she's going to start firing up the grill. She's going to get lunch going. I wanted to move over here. This is my first time coming over here all morning long. It's my first time really seeing all of the shrimp boats and what they look like. It's so devastating. And Renda Burian, she's been coming out here almost every single day since the storm, making sure people here who work on the docks, work in the neighborhood, have a hot meal every morning and, and every afternoon. We have video of her. This was yesterday. Rain or shine, she's been here. It was pouring down rain on them, and they had that tarp over them. They were still firing up that grill. Just trying to make the best of the situation, but many of the people here, they're living in tents. They have no running water, no electricity. We're making calls to FEMA. We're making calls to Project Hope. I know they've already come out here and helped so much just to try and, and get you know life back to a little bit of a normalcy over here. One of the other reasons why I wanted to move over here, Andy, if you can zoom in, we have boats behind me that 
have multiple holes inside of them. They are sunk and as you move through the water, there is just muck and debris and I can smell the diesel over here. I was talking to a couple of people. They said this is not just an economic disaster. They can see that this is possibly going to be an environmental issue for a long time. Speaking of that, I want to bring in Margie over here. Margie, thank you so much for stuff for talking to me this morning. Now, you didn't stay at your home, which is going to be right behind us for the storm. You went over to Fort Myers Beach, yes, but you said you were you were high up, so you were safe. That's Can you correct. kind of tell me about your, your story during the storm? Well, we had invited, uh, my friend and I had invited uh, seven other people and we had my dog uh, into his home. It's three stories up in the 5800 block of Estero, cross, close to the Catholic Church. And um, we all thought, well, he's three stories up, we're gonna be safe. And it's a, it was built 11 years ago, it meets all the codes and what have you. And I have goosebumps sharing this with you, but we all survived, we all survived. And uh, we lost everything down below and everyone lost their vehicles, of course, but we got through it, we survived. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, if you can oh. save a few lives. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay, you know, hon. Yeah, you're gonna we're, get we're, me too. Oh yeah, we're we're good. So, so you, the next morning, you had to walk 18 miles back to your home, and you were the one who dragged me over here, and you told me, "Look at this water," because of the environmental issues. You're having that right in your home right now too. I am. Um, it seems like it's not 18 miles down the beach. I just want to clarify that. But I went to other people's homes with oh. them who lived further down the island, mm -hmm. and then I walked back over to here to get to my house not knowing what was happening yeah. exactly but um, yes this is a, just an in, not just economic oh, this is a this is an environmental nightmare yeah. and uh, I think none of us really saw that it was going to be this bad but this is years of cleanup not just mentioning lives lost um, businesses properties um, people's livelihoods. So you're having issues at home. You said, is it diesel fuel it is that you diesel. have? Uh, between my neighbor's house and mine, we live right over here behind the shrimp docks. Mm -hmm. And I've been in that home 20 years. I've been off of Main Street 32 years. And uh, I've never seen anything like this before, but there are diesel tanks positioned uh, between my neighbor's house and mine. And I was up to my ankles the first day in diesel fuel, antifreeze, mud, sludge, trash, glass, you name it, everything that you see here is yeah. between my house and my neighbors. But you got in contact with FEMA and you said that they're supposed to come out tomorrow. I gave you my number and I said if they don't come out tomorrow, we'll make more phone calls. Has anyone else come out to help you? Um, I had a couple of firemen stop by the other day, okay. brought me tarps, which thank God my roof is on. I didn't. I, I might need them, I didn't need them now, okay. but I was grateful. Uh, I hope that they come out. I talked with FEMA last night, they called late. I was. They were very kind. I'm grateful for any hand up, not a handout. But this environmental disaster, I'm not qualified. Uh, yeah. I'll be happy to help, but I'm not qualified to clean all this diesel and it's six foot up on the walls in my home. Uh, everything I have is covered in diesel that I'm trying to salvage. I have no water, no power. Like many people, I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. Yeah. We need help. We, you know, thanks for all the wonderful donations and gift cards and clothes and what have you. But we need help. We need physical help, muscle, yeah. pe volunteers that are willing to get her done, come in and help. Yeah, you were mentioning FEMA and people needing help. So I called FEMA yesterday because I was talking to Renda, who's been making all of the food. Uh, I want to play part of that interview with everyone. So if you are on Fort Myers Beach and you're living in a very similar situation where you have no running water and no electric, here's what they said about disaster recovery centers and FEMA representatives out on Estero Island. Or is there anything planned for Fort Myers Beach like so, that? So we do have some folks down at Fort Myers Beach today doing a similar thing, but I will tell you there's a difference with regard to those folks and what's at a disaster recovery center and what um, you would get by calling in. The disaster recovery center and calling in, they are going to have more access to the system to be able to, to kind of uh, work with it as opposed to what you're seeing on Pine Island or uh, Fort Myers Beach or any of our other disaster survivor assistance teams that are kind of out in the community. They're really there to register people and to explain the process. If you're coming in with like a more complicated scenario where you've already registered and you're really looking to update information. 
So that's the situation with FEMA over on Fort Myers Beach. Uh, I also asked them about hygiene stations for a lot of people here and also running bathrooms. They said that's going to be something I have to contact Fort Myers Beach about and maybe even possibly the county. So that's going to be my next email, my next phone call. Um, before we go, I just want to say, Margie, thank you so much for sharing your story with me. And hopefully we can just get you and the rest of the waterfront working community some help. But for now, back to you guys. Lauren, and thank you, Margie, for sharing your story. Absolutely. Well, a sense of urgency was felt by a volunteer organization in Harlem Heights. They are working so hard to restore many of the homes that were damaged and destroyed by the hurricane. Our Colton Chavez was out with some of those volunteers from Crisis Relief and Recovery. And this morning, he's showing us why a helping hand really is making such a difference for some of these families. It's kind of Scare. Five year old Martha, translating for her grandma who only speaks Spanish, says she was with her family when floodwaters rushed into their home in Harlem Heights. The water was here and we were sleeping where the football. Sleeping on higher ground, Martha tells me, overnight across the street at the Kelly Road soccer complex as their entire neighborhood was underwater. Two weeks later and the floodwaters are gone and organizations like Crisis Relief and Recovery are helping Martha and her family remove everything that was lost. What we try to do first is identify the most vulnerable populations that have had the greatest need and been hit the hardest. Member Ethan Wendell says there's no denying the community of Harlem Heights was hit hard leaving more families needing help than Ethan has volunteers to cover. The urgency is that mold is spreading, actively spreading, and we're in the position right now where if we don't get some stuff done, we're going to turn into a health crisis. Ethan says CRR handles everything from roofs to indoor restoration, but what they need most is helping hands. These crews are, are muck and gut crews. They're, they're bringing stuff out of the house. These are things that almost anybody can do. It's not highly technical contractor work. But it's work that, if not completed soon, could be made worse by the return of afternoon storms. But now that these rains have started back up, every day is another, it's like another disaster because they clean up stuff in the house, then their roof leaks again. So if you're looking to get involved and you want to volunteer, it's easy. All you have to do is come right here to the Harlem Heights Community Center where groups are meeting at both 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day. Every day we'll be starting teams to, to, to partner with our leaders, with other organizations to get this community restored as quickly as possible. In Harlem Heights, Colton Chavez, Fox 4. Well, this morning, thousands of people are still in shelters here in Southwest Florida, and that means there are volunteers from all over the country helping them. Our national correspondent Axel Tercios is in Fort Myers to show us how evacuated families are doing there. We're worried about are we going to be able to get another place or housing? Playing with her six year old son, Derek, is how Emily Montgomery tries to forget, at least for a minute the new but harsh reality of her life. We never anticipated being in a shelter, but it is, you know, it's a challenge with four kids. Montgomery and her family are staying at a shelter being managed by the American Red Cross. There's always an ear to cry on. They're really good about that. They've taken good care of the kids. The family recently moved back to Lee County, Florida, and while looking for a place to live, they stayed at a hotel. That hotel building was battered by Hurricane Ian. This is not my first hurricane. My husband's not, he's like me. We've been through all the hurricanes. This is the worst we have ever been through. The Montgomery family rode out the storm in their hotel room. How are you and your family doing right now? Stressed. <laughs> and coming out of that, what do you call it, um, shock, it started to set in the new normal that you can't go back to what we love down on Fort Myers Beach. It's not there. I lost people that I knew on Fort Myers Beach that didn't make it through the storm. Since then, they relocated to this shelter, one of three centers the American Red Cross still has open. The individuals that we have here have come from all over the Fort Myers region, and these are people who have lost it all. Tiffany Gonzalez from the American Red Cross says their goal is to provide a safe space to sleep, food to eat, and medical and mental health services. We are not planning on closing anytime soon. We are here as long as they need us as the Red Cross, but we do have our caseworkers coming in, and they will start helping create a transition plan for these residents that are here. Volunteers have fanned out throughout the devastated areas. People from numerous states who left their lives behind 
to come to Florida and help those who most need it, which include cleaning efforts and repairs at shelters. Meanwhile, temporary repairs to the Sanibel Island Causeway are allowing trucks and first responders to finally access the island, giving utility workers the chance to restore power. A community bound by tragedy, working together as one. For Fort Myers Beach Strong, for Southwest Florida Strong, we will come back. The American Red Cross says people who want to make a donation or volunteer can start that process by going to redcross.org. Well, this morning, the death toll from Hurricane Ian is officially up to 108. And we are starting to hear more about some of those people from their family members who want to tell their stories. Fox Force Caitlin Knapp spoke with the sister of a man named Gregory Strasser, who was found dead in his Fort Myers home. Day by day, we're learning more about the victims of Hurricane Ian. Many of those faces are on this remembrance wall in downtown Fort Myers, but some faces are not on here, like Gregory Strasser. I've lost the last person that shared all those memories from when we were kids. Kids, not blood related. He was my big brother. But a bond as if they were. Greg Strasser was adopted at a young age and watched over his younger sister, Janet Link. He was a really gentle soul. Janet says he owned a motorcycle shop before eventually moving to Fort Myers in the early 90s. Greg being Greg, he built, he bought a firehouse in Fort Myers. A home where he hunkered down during Hurricane Ian. He used to always say to me, Jan, don't worry. You worry too much. I'm going to be okay. And, um, and I said, all right, I'm going to call. I'm going to check in on you later. And when later came, his neighbor said that they had found him. Um, deceased in his in his house. This is the last person who knew me when I was born or from the time I was a little kid. A little kid that grew up to be a gentle soul, kind hearted and spiritual. He's saying, don't, don't worry, Jan, which is what he always said. And you know, I'm okay. It's okay. It's okay. I had a good life and enjoy your life. A life Janet will always remember. I'd say I miss you. you <laughs> I miss you so much. I miss talking to you. In Fort Myers, Caitlin Knapp, Fox 4. It's so hard to hear all of these stories. Lee County Medical Examiner's Office says Strasser died of COPD, but they are listing him as a victim of Hurricane Ian. Janet said he used an electric machine to help him breathe. Florida Power and Light customers who need financial help as they recover from Hurricane Ian can take advantage of the company's Care to Share program. That's a partnership with local Salvation Army chapters. Customers with lower incomes can get up to $2,000 for electrical repairs needed for crews to safely restore their power. To apply for the help or to donate, you can visit fpl.com help. All right, we want to show you some uh, new video. This is from the Matt Lachey Pine Island Fire Control District. So they posted some drone video. This is of Flamingo Bay. They say it's one of the harder hit areas on island, and they say uh, they're doing this and posting these videos to show community members who haven't been able to get back to their homes and who want to see what their homes look like, what Flamingo Bay specifically is dealing with. Right now, the time is 1048 as we head into the weekend here, and many of you have a couple days off here to Continue to pick up the pieces and start the rebuilding process. The big question is, what is the weather hold? After a couple of stormy and wet days, we still have some rain showing up on the radar as a cold front will slowly drift to the south. And you can see the heavier rain over off to the east coast. We've had a few light showers near the 10,000 Island area, Port of the Islands, Everglades City. Otherwise, it's all false return, kind of popping in and out of the radar here. These are real rain showers moving away from the coastline. Yesterday at Pageville, we picked up officially 0.04. Naples, the recording site there, is still waiting to be repaired and back into uh, service after the hurricane. I know a lot of you picked up much more than 0.04. The record on that date was 2.51 back in the 60s. Now our temperatures are in the low 80s here, upper 70s along the Peace and Mayaka Rivers and down in Ochopee and Everglades City. We're sitting at 80. We should climb up to about 87 degrees. We got that chance of storms later on today. 87 is our average and sunset seven o'clock and this will be the last time this year that we have a sunset seven o'clock or later. Matter of fact, I believe it's March 12th somewhere right, right around there that we uh, do daylight savings again and eventually see a sunset after seven o'clock. So we got a ways to go here as the days get shorter and shorter. As far as the uh, record on the state, 92 going back to 2018 and the cold front is kind of putting on the brakes. It's hitting this moisture tail that extends all the way back in the tropical storm Carl and as it slows down, it's going to continue 
continue to provide us with at least a scattered chance of showers and storms. Let me show you what it looks like here. The computer model showing those developing here 7, 8 o'clock. They'll stick around through midnight and even on Saturday, even though the northeasterly flow comes behind the front, there's still enough moisture due to that moisture from Carl that we've got a chance in the late afternoon and evening hours. It's not until Sunday where the drier air moves in and we get rid of the rain chance here in southwest Florida. Let me show you a little closer to view. Help you plan your Friday here. Again, late after sunset, that's when we expect that wet weather. Midnight, still some showers falling. Tomorrow morning, we start off dry, but you can see in the late afternoon, anywhere from 6 to roughly 9, we'll see some wet weather. And then here it comes, the dry air moving in on the northeasterly breeze, finally kicking things down. The 11 o'clock advisory in on Carl, just a little bit early, winds of 45 miles per hour. Moving south-southeast, it'll continue to interact with Mexico here, a very mountainous terrain, and uh, become a remnant low pretty quick in the days ahead. As far as the Ingman Marine forecast, you got to watch for the storm debris weather is not your issue, uh, at least wind wise. Couple of late day showers and storms. If you don't have to be out on the water, don't leave it open there for the first responders and those uh, recovery crews as they work their way around southwest Florida. So after reaching 87 today, we'll get you over to the seven day because we're going to stay in the upper 80s all the way through Sunday. But get this another cold front. This one's got a little more punch. We're going to see temperatures in the upper 50s. If that does happen, it'll be the first time in four years, I believe, that we're going to see temperatures in the 50s before November the 1st. Time is 1051. We'll be right back. All right, it's 1051 right now. We want to get you a quick check of traffic hotspots. When clients call Fair and Fair, they're looking for a ray of hope. They just need some reassurance. They need hope to know that there is going to be an end to this situation that they're currently in, and we're there to help them.
Well, Hurricane Ian and some medical issues are keeping a Southwest Florida woman from doing what she loves to do over the holidays, a project where she sends stockings to troops overseas. Fox 4's Brianna Brownlee is showing us how her friends are stepping in to carry out the mission. Just how much she's loved. A tearful reminder from Kay's quilt shop owner, Kay Harper, addressed to Marsha Wakuviak, who Kay calls her fabric fairy. Kay's dear friend Marsha lost everything because of Hurricane Ian. This is cute, I like that. The two made many art pieces together, and for the past five years, during the holiday season, Marsha pushed to master the art of giving back by sending holiday cheer to United States troops. She generally makes a thousand stockings for the troops. However, this holiday season, Marsha can't complete this task. She lost everything in Hurricane Ian, including her sewing machine, and she is currently hospitalized. Um, not as a result of the hurricane, but other medical issues. Marsha's dear friend Kay and around 25 soldiers in fabric banded together to carry out Marsha's holiday mission. Some that we have that are already completed. And they're just so pretty and nice. With less than a week to complete the stockings, the group has about 50 completed, with a goal of finishing around 250 by the end of Thursday. And for the troop who receives this stocking, here's what Kay wants you to remember. I guess even when things are bad, they're not that bad. Right now, a quick check of the seven day forecast. We got a nice weekend once we get the Sunday, just a couple of showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today for our special coverage of Hurricane Ian Recovery. We will be back on the air at 4 this afternoon. Have a great day. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do.
Moving on because of Ian. This morning, where you can go to get your children into a new school if the storm has forced you to move. And restrictions have been lifted here at Bonita Beach as many of the residents are now getting an opportunity to assess the damage. We'll tell you exactly what they're seeing when we come back. Sense of relief and recovery as more lights are coming back on. Crews are back at it on Pine Island this morning to get more people the electricity they so desperately want and need. Live from Southwest Florida, you're watching Fox 4 Morning News. And good morning. Thanks so much for joining us for Fox 4 Morning News at 10 today. I'm Amy Wegman. Good morning, everybody. I'm Chris Shaw. We have a full hour of Ian recovery for you from roads to schools to airports. There are several new reopenings to tell you about. Yeah, but first we want to get you a check of your weather. Uh, we know so many communities are still working to clean up. We know a lot of you still have damage to your roofs and maybe you haven't been able to get a tarp on. So. Weather has been the focus the past couple of days. Let's check in with our certified meteorologist Trent Eric. We saw the rain. I know there might be some today, but what's yeah. it really looking like for everyone? Uh, we're going to get kind of in a summertime pattern again today. We're going to see a chance of some showers and thunderstorms late about a 30 to 40 percent. Only difference is we have a front that is slowly moving down the state and that moisture is still sticking ahead of it. And you can see showers and thunderstorms off the East Coast, even a few light showers here off of Collier County, but most of the inland areas really not being impacted. The showers are out over the open and water and later on today, 7, 8 o'clock, pretty late. We'll see that thunderstorm chance begin to pop up. Our temperatures right now, 81 in Cape Coral, Bonita Springs, upper 70s inland. And you can see the visibility much improved from this morning where we had some patchy fog around town. Let's get you a look at the computer model for today. You see 7, 8 o'clock, the thunderstorms developing. They'll linger here through midnight, so we'll see some rain overnight as well. And with our temperatures climbing up to 87, pretty typical for this time of year, 87 is our average high. As power is restored and a lot of the main roads are cleared out, we are seeing communities across Southwest Florida opening up. And in some cases, people are heading back to check out their homes and businesses for the first time. Yeah, and for the first time, people in Benita Beach in that area are doing just that. Fox Tours John Barron is live in that area right now as people return. And John, you're getting a chance to speak with some of them. Yeah, absolutely. So Chris and Amy, you guys brought up a good point. This is one of the first times that a lot of these residents are coming back. You know, we do have a lot of people who are up in the north making their way down here for some of those homes that they have during that summertime. And, you know, when we take a look at some of the damage they're seeing, this is what they're taking a look at. Some of them coming back to some of those cars that find their way into the waterways here, like this marina. As you can see, this is one of the many trucks that we've already shown you that have really found their way into the water. And these were obviously parked up at the front yard. So that really tells you how strong that storm surge was to lift these cars into a completely different area and this one sitting on top of a post. So this is the kind of destruction we're seeing around Bonita Beach and we actually spoke with one of the neighbors who told us Stan actually uh, excuse me we spoke with uh, you know him about him and his family about what we could really see and they were telling us you know this is the kind of destruction that they didn't want to have to come back to but they're thankful that their family is okay and other things can just be replaced. The, the, the damage is just, it's unbelievable. I mean, when you walk up and down the street, you just, you just can't believe that this could happen. But we're all alive. Everyone I know is. I know there's a lot of people lost their lives. Um, but it, it's going to be a long time until it's put back together. And this is the Sin family right here. They're actually working right now in their backyard. Their pool has been flooded with debris and mud, and they're actually having to kind of just clean it out right now. And they're filling it up right here, and, and they're just taking it to the front yard, hoping that debris can be taken away. We've seen a couple of those trucks already do so. And as you can see, actually, you can kind of take a look at that white truck that we were showing you, that Silverado. That is halfway. The bed is submerged in the marina, and that's also another truck that we've been telling you. And actually, the house across right there with the blue roof. They are actually the owner told us that he's actually just going to knock it down and just start fresh. He said there's no point in trying to, you know, restore this right now. He just wants to start out fresh and just kind of have a new. So that's one of the other options that a lot of people are saying here. Bonita Beach is something that they're going to start taking a look at. We'll have more for you guys coming up later on in the show. But for now here live at Bonita Beach, John Barron, Fox 4. A lot of damage, a lot of work to do, John. Thank you very much. Well, the Lee County School District will do air quality tests on 38 schools today with the hope that they can reopen next week. Right, so the plan right now is to open Lee County schools in phases. Superintendent Dr. Christopher Bernier made the announcement yesterday. He says schools will open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. The district will find temporary buildings for schools with the worst damage. So here's a look at the plan for next week. On Monday, it's uh, 11 elementary schools and two middle schools that will be headed back to class. 
Uh, on Tuesday, it's 10 ele elementary schools, one middle school, two Title I schools, and two high schools. Uh, the two high schools are Cypress Lake in Fort Myers and Ida Baker in Cape Coral. There's a full list uh, of the schools opening up on Monday and Tuesday, the reopenings, all of that on fox4now.com. If you're wondering when you see your child's school listed and where it stands, if it's not uh, open again, Lee County Schools put together a video detailing what the nine safety criteria are for them to open up the buildings for students to head back in safely. So you can find that information when you go to their website and there's a video there. It's leeschools.net. And families who had to relocate because of the storm can send their children to a school that's closer to where they live now. This morning, the school district has five locations open to make that process of re-enrolling a little easier. Those sites are in Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Lehigh Acres, and Bonita Springs. The addresses are right here on your screen. You can also find this information on our website, fox4now.com. These sites are open from 9 until 4.30 or until the last person in line has been helped. And we spoke to a family who was at one of those centers and chose to switch to online learning. A man named Paul McCartney, who is from Cape Coral, says the storm damaged his house, so his family has decided to move north. He says switching his daughter to online learning will help make sure she doesn't fall behind. It actually helped us because it's something we knew we had to do, so them being set up has been real convenient. Um, but to make the decision, it's not been easy all along. Yeah, of course, you know, we've been in our home now seven years and time to move on. Now, there's another group of students who go to schools that will not open anytime soon because they are so badly damaged. Those students will automatically be enrolled into a nearby school and they do not have to re-enroll. Well, the boil water notice for all Lee County utility customers has been lifted. Earlier this week, the majority of customers were able to safely use that drinking water. Well, now the Town and River community, North Trail RV Park and Siesta Isles neighborhood, they are all in the clear as well. So if you don't pay Lee County Utilities for your water bill and you have a different utility provider, uh, you can contact contact them, excuse me, to find out where you stand with a boil water notice. Most of them are putting it on their social media pages as well. All right, city leaders in Cape Coral, they're asking for your help to expedite the cleanup process. They're saying when you put debris out on the roadway and on the curbside, make sure not to block utility boxes and lift stations. They say by avoiding those areas, you can prevent damage to the boxes and speed up repairs that need to be made. City officials in the Cape say they do have several claw trucks going around right now. They're picking up debris, but please be patient. Uh, we know that this is going to take quite a while before it's all cleared. Power crews will be back on Pine Island today. They are working to restore power to more of the island. Until yesterday, pretty much all of the island had been without power. But this video you see right here is the work that LCEC crews did yesterday. So there is now power on a stretch of Stringfellow Road, which includes the fire stations, the town center, and Pine Island Elementary School. LCEC says its focus is on the barrier islands and a few customers in places like Cape Coral and North Fort Myers who still don't have power. Internet service, at least on Pine Island, is a different story right now. People there tell us almost nobody has it. That's a problem for people who say they can't apply for FEMA help. Some people tell us they are struggling to just get a hold of emergency responders. Four days ago, we were having problems. They were having trouble locating people because they couldn't call them back. They couldn't keep people on the line. Our link hotspot is set up on the southern part of the island, but people say it doesn't have enough bandwidth and they are asking for more resources to meet the need. The Naples Airport is back open today. This is the first time it's been open since the hurricane made landfall. Uh, not all of the runways are open there at the Naples Airport because crews are still working to fix some of the lights that were damaged in the storm. The Naples Airport Authority says other nearby airports like Southwest Florida International provided resources to help them get most of their runways back up and running again. Well, this is good to see. First responders who have storm damage will get millions of dollars to help them clean up their homes. Governor Ron DeSantis made that announcement when he was here in Punta Gorda yesterday. The money will come from the Florida Disaster Fund. It's raised more than $45 million so far, and $2 million of that money will go to first responders. Florida Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed sent a letter asking for federal help for farmers. She wants a USDA secretarial disaster designation for farms in 17 counties. They include Lee, Collier, Charlotte, 
DeSoto, Hendry and Sarasota counties. Freed says preliminary damage assessments show farms in those areas do meet the requirements to get that federal help. It's 10 10 right now. The election is now less than four weeks away and Governor Ron DeSantis is expanding voting access in counties that were devastated by the storm. So that includes Southwest Florida. The governor's executive order expands the number of days and locations where you can go for early voting. This also allows you to call the supervisor of elections office and by phone you can request a mail-in ballot. That would be instead of the previous uh, requirement, which was a signature. Jenya Coulter is the senior elections analyst for a nonpartisan group called OSET. She used to work in Polk County at an elections office. She's worked elections after storms, and she says to voters here in Southwest Florida, make sure you take advantage of these extra early voting options. It also frees things up for election offices because early voting locations almost always have the best trained poll workers. They may not have a huge staff, but they've got a very experienced staff. So uh, make sure that you take advantage of that. We've got information on uh, who's running and what you need to know about the upcoming election on our website, fox4now.com. By the way, the governor's order also waives training requirements for poll workers. All right, this is a situation that so many people are finding themselves in. We've met them face to face here at Fox 4 after the storm. They have no home, they have no car, and they sadly have nowhere to go. But there are emergency shelters opened up all over Southwest Florida to give those people a roof and four walls. One of the largest is the American Red Cross shelter at Hertz Arena. Fox 4's Calvin Lewis spoke with some of the people who are staying in the shelter there at Hertz Arena to get a little perspective on what it's like. There's a lot of people that are stranded here that have absolutely nothing and no way. Inside Hertz Arena, you'll find survivors of Hurricane Ian with all sorts of backgrounds, like Roland Flores, a veteran who was previously at another shelter. I'm hoping not to be here for more than an, another week. And uh, I guess the VA is trying to, you know, get things worked out. They're putting some of us vets up in a, a hotel or something. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. At least I'll be someplace where it's safe. It's been two weeks since Hurricane Ian made landfall, and survivors are still trying to figure out how they are going to recover. But with each passing day and every hour, tensions are getting higher. It's like no one cares, but they, but they act like they do. Charles Terrell is another one of those who sought refuge at the arena. Me, I'm not a homeless, but half these people that came here, they were homeless before they got here. And then, you, and then you do have genuine people that lost their homes and this and that. People like Brittany Allen, a wife and mother to seven children. We're, we sleep on an ice rink, so <laughs> to try to get off the ice would be amazing. While resources have been provided, like hot meals, running water, and electricity, she says conditions have progressively worsened over time. It is completely packed. There are still those sleeping on the floor. Um, you know, there are still those sleeping up in the stands. Um, a lot more people are sick, a lot more cough. The elderly are, you know, they actually took three people to the hospital while we were here due to dehydration. And at the same time, efforts are being made to help those survivors find their footing post shelter. We also have now our caseworkers that are coming in and these caseworkers are assigned to the individuals and will help them find a transition plan. So once they move on from the shelter, they know exactly what's going to happen. In the meantime, these survivors will keep taking it day by day. But still, we keep fighting, we keep plugging on. You know, we're going to get it done one way or another. But that's because that's who we are, you know. In Lee County, Calvin Lewis, Fox 4. And the Red Cross says that they will keep Hertz Arena open as long as they need to as a shelter. Right now, they say they have about 400 people sheltered there, uh, but they have the capacity to hold another 600. Lee County Domestic Animal Services is working to reunite animals with their owners. The department is asking people to turn in stray animals. They will be processed, and if no owner is found, the rescuer may adopt that animal. Well, the commercial fishing industry here in southwest Florida has some new challenges to deal with because of Ian. Take a look at this video. It is unforgettable the shape that some of these boats are in. The storm surge took out most of the shrimping industry along Fort Myers Beach. Listen to these numbers. Of the 50 boats that were in port during Ian, only two can be used. 
On Pine Island, four of the five fish houses were destroyed. All of the commercial docks around them are gone, and the grouper boats were severely damaged. The owner of Island Seafood Market on Matt Lachey says the area's identity is now in jeopardy. Fishing industry and commercial industries in this area, we're going to lose the founding of what founded this area. I mean, our commercial fishermen on Pine Island especially, when the original infrastructure on this island was set to get catch from fishermen to market. So, I mean, the culture, the history of what made this area unique in the first place is, is gone or going to be gone, and I don't want to see that happen. Well, that's why he and other fishermen hope the state and federal governments will help them by declaring a fishery disaster order, and we could be headed in that direction. The FWC Division of Marine Fisheries said this in an email to Fox 4. FWC has already been in contact with our partners in the industry and, the coordinating, and are coordinating the next steps. As soon as a rapid assessment is conducted, we anticipate that the state will be requesting federal fisheries disaster declaration from the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Well, the harbor master from Fort Myers Beach posted a video on Twitter, and he's warning people about what's in the harbor in the Matanzas Bay mooring field. Austin Gilchrist said the mooring field is closed 